Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Okay, let's continue with space exploration. Been doing a couple of things off stream. Uh, cleaning up the old main bus base up here, among other things. Uh, found another oil patch that we haven't exploited yet. Uh, what else? I added another oil processing area here, since it looks like we might actually get close to bottlenecking on the machines themselves. Uh, but more because I want to dismantle these old builds, which have tier 3 modules and the old beacons and stuff and far more machines to get the same job done uh, just moving towards uh, being able to do it at a lower UPS cost we have been getting the UPS to creep slightly upward at least um, but we've got a lot more to do yet and I was thinking as well we definitely don't need a knick-knock. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're well. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for asking. Um, I thought I might spend a little bit of time at the start of this stream. Uh, I'm just measuring to make sure all of those chests line up the same way. And I think they do. What I noticed uh, looking at the infinite researchers for space exploration is they each require one red science pack and so on. Uh, we need to produce like these science packs only as fast as we need to produce deep space science packs for any of the infinite research that we're going to have later on. Uh, so it's really, really excessive to have these uh, these giant blocks to make signs, especially now. So what I would like to do is... What have we got? Six of these? Where's the militaries? Oh, there it is. Uh, what I would like to do is redesign these with uh, Tier 2 beacons. And... I thought just to make it nice and quick and smooth, we might do that in the super editor. Uh, but first I just needed to confirm uh, that this will... We're not going to move these chests. We're not going to be deconstructing and picking up uh, 230,000 chemical science packs, for example. That would be a bit of a nuisance. Uh, and the same pretty much applies to the input stations. So I thought perhaps I could just grab these as blueprints. Um, and we'll throw these into the super editor. Get rid of the obscenely high um, machine count. And we'll build something a bit leaner. And also, we won't need the uh, the same throughput that this is currently capable of. But we could uh, build something which we can easily upgrade. Uh, what, what's our what's our current max rate? If if we had like infinite resources, how fast would we be getting uh, tier one signs? Hey, Veldak. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Does this have speed modules in it? Yeah, that's a bit excessive. Well, probably. It's only 3.5 per second. Uh, assuming that we could support that. That is actually quite slow. No matter what you do, you always need more faster. I mean, we don't right now, right? Can, can, 
can, can we agree on th that? In all seriousness, though, um... The... The science... The basic sciences that we've got are really overdone with low technology and way too many machines. Uh... I should have included the train stop names. In these blueprints. I guess I can update them. Select new contents. Red science. Go. We shouldn't have any crafting combinator blueprint, uh, blueprint settings in here. Let's grab the green science again. We do have the train stop names actually. Why were they unchecked for this one? And then... Train stop names? What's this? Blue science? Whoops. That needs to go down here. Purple science. Train stop names. Cool. And last but not least... Yellow science. Whoops. Okay. Let's take this over to the super editor. We'll save this for now. Wait, do we have... Uh, I would definitely like to get another one of these getting built. So that I don't have to remember it later. Okay. Once the floors are there, we can just click that. Save game. And while that's happening, I might jump ahead and make sure words on stream are re uh, is ready for later. Oh, and I need to mute this. Where is it? There we go. Still saving. Cool. That should do it. All right, let's jump into the super editor. Uh, once we finish quitting to the menu. Big save? Indeed, it's more than half a gig. Uh, you can actually find it if you want to peruse it yourself on... Well, there's a link to it on the... Discord. Where did I put it, though? Here we go. Uh, if you want to browse the mess that I've made with this uh, playthrough, as of a day or two ago, uh, you can find it at that link. But yeah, it is more than half a gig. That is not an exaggeration. I think it's 560 meg or something. All right, let's jump down to Nalvis. Uh I don't think it's going to let us build regular rail up here. That's the whole point of space rail. Yeah. And I don't feel like building space rail on Nalvis. Engage. Okay, where are we landing? Um, ideally, I would like to not have to bother building out more cheaty roboport and stuff. 
then again, we're doing like six different builds here, so we are going to need some space. Alright, let's put those here. And I guess we'll put a OP Robopod down this way. That should cover everything. No? Wait, what? A cheaty Robopod's not included in here? Let's get it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so first thing I want to do here is going to be to remove all the old power poles before we forget. Um, we'll keep the stations as they are. We don't need all of these machines, and we certainly don't need the tier 1 beacons. I'll cut this off about here. What is this splitter? Two... I think it's a two to three. Oh, yeah, it was like... Because it's going to saturate, it doesn't have to be like a super clever two to three balancer like this that I don't... No, wait, we did use that. So it's literally just a two splitter into a two to four, and then both of these split to the sides, but this one loops back into the middle. Hmm. I still really don't uh, viscerally get complicated balances. Um, I could leave some of that there, probably, maybe. Nah, let's not even worry about it. Okay, so our limits here are 90 per second cog, 90 per second uh, copper plate on each side of the block. Uh, let me get this out of my inventory first. All kinds of crap we don't need right now. Be gone. Okay. So first of all, I'll try and do this without typing slash cheat because I don't want to have to keep going back to unresearch energy weapon damage back to the level that it's at in our game. So first things first, we want a tier 2 beacon. And fortunately, tier 3 beacon, uh, unlike tier 1 to 2, this is actually the exact same shape. Hello, streamer. Beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's throw in some tier 3 assembly machines. Set them to... I don't like running this fast. But I... I wish I could toggle this without just it being 0 to 100%. Um, I might just put in some regular... Oh no, I need to request them. No character? Oh, I'm in the nav set. Give me some regular legs, please. Whoops. I should be... I'm not in the logistic network. There we go. They are not 
being delivered, actually. Okay, I'm just going to not worry about that. Super speed or nothing. Maybe I could take one of them out. Yeah, I can live with this. Okay. Uh, alright, so... Red signs. And tier 6 productivity modules. Uh, which I don't have on me. That's going to give us tier 3 speed, actually. That was quick. Uh, what do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4. That's a lot of speeds. So I think we're going to go extra power with that. Let's swap this out. We can... Uh, and we need... I think it's seven speed modules, and the rest are efficiencies. And... nope. Oh wait, this thing needs power first. And we'll throw that into these other blocks as well. Okay. Uh, power, you say. Let's put in an infinity accumulator. Alright, so what's our rate here? Minus 80% with four productivity modules. I think that is the limit. Oh, this is minus 40%. Hmm. I can live with that. 225 kilowatts each. How fast is this per machine? One per second, almost? Exactly negative 0.6 uh, for the inputs. How many of these can we fit around a beacon? It's a very simple recipe. Um, two in, one out. So we just need, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, maybe the, as big as we might make this, we just need a shared belt for each of these. Um, how would this look? Only 21.6 per second. That's, this is only half a belt for each of these resources, surprisingly enough. If I squeeze these closer together, and we'll need a zigzaggy belt uh, for input and or output here. Like that. Will we be able to fit any more? Not really. On the other hand, I could, if I go two tiles up or down vertically, sacrifice three of these at each, uh, at the top and at the bottom, minus six, but we gain uh, ten. And I think I'd like to just have one beacon on each side if possible. How fast is this going to be? 33 per second? Uh, that is more than we're going to be needing. Regardless. But nevertheless, I would like to design this to be big. And just trim it down and make it upgradable. If I do it this way... We need to have uh I guess we lose the advantage that we gain from that. Because we'd need to have like input belt here, output belt here. 
Uh, maybe? No, it's not gonna reach. No, I think... I think it was better... when we just did this the obvious way. One more on each side. And I think I'll do... I would like to do four outputs, just because that's easier to deal with with the splitters. Um, that would be one, two, three, four. Like that. So this will be the output. There's no way we can comfortably fit this twice, right? On each side? Possibly. Depends on the throughput. So right now we're at two belts of out... No, this is fine. If I try to double this, we're not going to keep up with the belts. Um... Ultimately. Okay. I think I'll get rid of this. We're going to have plenty of space. So, output is less than one per second. Um, I would normally do yellow inserters, but I think fast inserters are slightly better for the UPS. They consume twice the Actually, no. It's 400 or 500 minimum power consumption. That's actually much more trivial a difference than I thought. Um, but I think the longer the inserters are swinging for, uh, the higher the UPS cost. So we'll do it this way. And then input belt. I guess that's just going to be fast inserters as well. Very straightforward. This is red science after all. Let's just double check. Uh, for the whole thing, we only need one belt of copper and one belt of iron. And we've got two of each up here. This won't be a problem at all. In fact, I could probably trim this away, but there's already items in these chests uh, in our game, so I'll leave them there for now, and maybe we'll, like, get rid of these. Okay, so this part goes like so. Uh... We also need... Wait, what? No, that's right. How much do we need input? Less than two per second. We can definitely just use long arms for some of these. Do it like this. And... I don't have any long arm inserters here. And like so. If I was doing this earlier in the game, I would probably use less than blue belts. Uh, but there's really... It's at this rate, at this stage, it's more of a hassle to carry multiple types of belt. Okay. Uh, 
we will be wanting a... Wait, we've got one, two... Yeah, 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 four belts of output here. We only need two. So let's merge this over this way. That's not gonna... That's almost gonna reach. Unfortunate. I wonder if it would make sense. This one and this one go to the same side. And this one and this one go to the opposite side. So we've got, let's see, only 20, it's actually 20, just over 22 and a half. No, it's just under 22 and a half. So technically this side of the belt should be able to support that, but... Well, I guess if I use a splitter to merge this, it, it, it actually has the same problem. Um, although it would be on an opposite side of the belt. So that doesn't really make a difference. And then... I guess that's a bit clearer. Alright, so we'll put this on the other side as well. And then... We need a belt balancer. I don't think we need a lane balancer, do we? Actually, if the max rate is significantly lower than 180... I don't think it's going to matter. Because the fast inserters will pick things up quick enough. Uh, we can probably do away with the usual balanced loader. Since we're going to do a belt balancer here. Whoops. just... I, I don't like splitting it from the middle here. Let's do this. Or something similar. Let's do a corner balancer. Uh, I should have one here. Yeah, there we go. Get rid of that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight belts that need to go into four. Uh, what if we did... Actually, I think I can deal with the belt side issue that may arise. If I do this and then link these two together. Something like that. Except then it's going to be a little bit awkward to bring this down here. something similar on this side, but not quite. Wait, is that wrong? Oh, I think that bit of belt was already there. Uh, 
Uh, this one can probably go on the outside. If only for symmetry's sake. And these two... Let's move that over a tile. Uh, why don't we move this thing, whole thing over a tile? Okay, what is this supposed to be? I'm confused. I think I'm... I think I moved it wrong. There we go. That's what I was going for. Okay. That looks pretty clean, actually. I don't mind this. Uh, I guess... Like this. Shouldn't look too bad. How did I do it on this side? Over here. One off. Uh, this, I think. And then we've got... Belt. 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 And what I want to do here is link all of these. On the last one, we read hand contents hold. Uh, and this one's unconditional, actually. And on the rest of them, uh, enable, disable, uh, anything greater than zero. So... Uh, so all of these will ignore what's on the belt until the last one picks something up, and then they'll all pick up at about the same time. Uh, this is really good for, like, max throughput to still keep things somewhat balanced, but on second thought, uh, we're only going to be doing maximum 134 per second. So I think we'll just stick with the balanced loader that we already had. And that'll be a bit more accurate. Okay, so I think all that's left to do here is link up the inputs. Replace the old... Uh, unnecessary regular signals that I put in before I learned that stations don't care. Is this space exploration post-game or not finished yet? Uh, no, it's not finished yet. Um, currently we've got a whole lot of infrastructure that has way too many machines um, that I'm uh, Replacing with newer stuff that uses fewer machines to do the same thing. Carenza, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Nine months. Wow. I almost forgot I've been doing this for nine months. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, I think we just need to link up the inputs now and we're done. Uh, we need one whole belt of copper and iron each. Uh, I might set it up so that... How many inputs do we have here? One, two, three. But since it's going to be saturated, 
we don't really have to worry about how we split that off too much. Although this is in a slightly awkward spot because of the splitter. I could move it. Like, if I move all of this in one tile, this part's going to get messed up again. And this one as well. Because we need to uh, do it a little bit, not like that. A little something like this. And as for the rest, that can just go that way. This would of course not be balanced, but this thing is going to be saturated anyway with these inputs. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this stuff, but for now, in our game, that does exist, so I want to merge it in here. This would actually be a perfectly reasonable way to do that, actually. Maholic, thank you very much for the raid. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And how was your stream today? How's the uh, space exploration going? It is space exploration, right? Or, or am I... Or is it the one with the blue pipes? Or is it both? Was good making life forms? Nully is... Oh, that's right. The one with the artillery cannons um, that make uh, all sorts of uh, biodiversity. Alright, so that's going to be good to drain this side out first. Yeah, artillery to deliver fish to oceans. <laughs> that sounds safe for the fish, right? What could go wrong? Um, I'd like to make this a bit cleaner looking. There we go. And on the other side, it should be pretty much the same. Except for the slight asymmetry of this part uh, having to be with the straight belt coming out on the right side. Or the left side, depending on how you look at it. And how many... how much copper and... We're only asking for two train loads. I mean, I guess this was more for the throughput. But yeah, we've got storage for 14.4 train loads of stuff here. And we're only asking for one train load of each. That doesn't even prevent this from getting empty, even if we've got plenty of resources. Shameful. Because these stack to 100, 16k is a train load. Um... Alright, so we have no old beacons, we have no old power poles, we've got the output, uh, the input and output chests are in exactly the same place. Uh, I haven't put this back yet. I guess this will have to do. Does that look a bit weird? I think it looks a bit too weird. Why don't we just... Link that up where it looks most logical. Seems... Wait, something's... something's wrong. This should be... Oh, these two are supposed to merge. Whoops. Uh, where would be the obvious place to make that happen? 
probably here. On this side, actually. And then... I was gonna have this part go underground to here. But then this would have to... I, I, I guess? Is this actually the neatest looking version of this that we can come up with? That's in the wrong place, actually. No, I think I hate it. How about this? I guess we could move this over a tile. And we can move this over a tile. And that's going to look a whole lot neater. I think. Can we not just... I think I like this better. Yeah, that's pretty good. Remodeling day, indeed. Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So many modules. Yeah, um, so I'm still building this as if we're going to go super fast, but I'm going to trim it down. We've only got, like, something... Uh, uh, for now, at least, we've only got, like, five deep space science per second for tier one, and that's if we were going maximum speed uh and all of the infinite uh, all, all of the researchers at this point require like one red science to one deep space science for example so we really really don't need a whole lot um to keep up with that so i think we'll probably we'll probably just remove the vast majority of these when we actually put this blueprint in. Um, but for the actual blueprint, I just want to design it as if we're going to go faster. Alright, so that is red science done. Let's select new contents. Grab all of this. Except for the magic uh, power source. And save. On to the next one is green sides. And it's going to be much the same, I think. Uh, except it's two and one in and two out for ten seconds. And this is five seconds. So it's the same output per second but we need double for one of the inputs. Um, can we use the same shape? Let's see. Uh, if we need two belts of, let's say, iron gear wheels, we actually do have two belts up here if we didn't uh, defunct this side. Um, we sort of did this part of the belting, assuming that we would be phasing out this part. Uh, so we only have... We're, we're kind of bottlenecked on... I don't know exactly how much. I guess one and a half belts. So we'll have to change that slightly at the very least, but... Uh, let's see. Uh, if we need two belts of one of these resources. We've got one belt here, one belt here. But what about the belts down this way? If we've only got three input belts, that would be one and a half. If I did uh, a double belt down this way, that would give us... A half belt here, and a half belt between these two, and a half belt between these two. 
Wait, no. One belt. Hold on. Yeah, a half belt for these two. One full belt for these. I don't think this is going to work out. Um, actually, it will. Actually, it won't. We're a little bit short. Okay, so we're not going to have the exact same shape here. We're going to need a, a little bit more room for inputs. But I think it's mostly going to be the same. Let's get rid of all of this. Um, swap that out. And then... I'll start with this as a template, I think. So our recipe is green science. input is going to have to be a bit different, is literally the only thing, actually. Uh, we need some power here. Uh, wait, I might have miscalculated something. Oh, I was wrong, actually. Because this is 10 seconds, and this is 5 seconds. So it's actually the same input rate for transport belts, and only half as much for inserters. Uh, so this is 86.4, 86.4, and for the whole thing here, well, I could just well, times 2 this, uh, 86.4 and 43.2. Which means we can get away with having the exact same shape. In fact, it's easier to keep up with the inputs than it is with uh, red signs. So that means one belt of each on this side would be enough. Which means we can phase out this side, just like we're doing with green, uh, red sides, which means we don't have to do any more work to get this one done. Alright, that one is finished. Let's update this blueprint. Okay, next is uh, military science. Oh, that's not right. This goes about here. Get rid of any old power poles, if we have them. Uh, so this one's a bit different. This is going to be one of the more complicated ones, because we're making firearm... We're making magazines on the spot instead of putting them into the rail system. Same goes for stone walls. Yeah, uh... This is going to be a whole thing. Oh. I thought I was clever, and I was surprised I hadn't thought of it before, ages ago, when I took another train input off of this part, but it turned out I did this ages ago. Uh, although I definitely had room to just do it here, in this instance. 
But yeah, I think we'll uh, once again try to stick with the same input and output stations. Big brain, indeed. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna be shaped very differently with our new beacons here. Uh, let's check, what's our max rate from all of this? Only 42 military science packs per second. Iron plate is nearly four belts. Coal is four belts. And two belts of copper. Do we really need all those grenades? Uh, 16.2 per second, 18 per second, pretty much. Alright, let's see what we can do. Wait, I did put... Yeah, we got the prod sixes in here. No worries. It would be a little bit simpler if I don't have to delete these belts, but... No, nah, let's just... Let's just not bring this baggage with us. Okay. Maybe steel can stay there. And copper. We'll see. So we need to make piercing round mag, grenade, and stone wall. All in the same place. We're getting less than one belt of military science. Uh... I very much doubt we'll be using this much space for it, but let's start with... Uh, where are we? I'm lost. Here we go. Uh, let's start with just copying this and turning this into military sites. And we need some... Power. We've got some power. I just deleted the uh, pylon substation that I put in the middle there earlier on. Oh. Blueprint goes here. Okay, so how much is this? 67 per second, that is a bit more than we're going to be needing. 44.9, just under one belt. That might be a good target. Uh, what do our inputs look like if we hold on to this? Uh, each input... We need three inputs though. 1, 1, and 2. We could do the sushi thing. I wouldn't mind an excuse to do the sushi thing. But... What, what's our throughput? Let's pretend we do put it all on one belt here. Uh, less than half a belt of stone wall, and half of that for these two. So that'll be fine, actually. What about the whole thing? A bit more than half a belt of stone wall. So we need two belts coming in for this. Um, let's suppose we put this... I could do it horizontally over here somewhere. It feels weird looking at it horizontally, honestly. but it might make a lot of sense to put it there. So what's our target? Let's suppose we just go for the maximum that we can fit under one beacon here. 15 uh, piercing round mags. Oh, we're probably asking too much of coal here.
grenade. Then again, with the higher tier productivity modules, we get more out of our belt throughput. Oh, we don't get prods in this. Never mind. Apparently you can put in the super productivity module in the cheat game, though. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure what the point of a super productivity module is, though, in a sandbox. Like, if you're cheating items, why don't you just cheat items directly? Anyway, um, how many grenades is this? Uh, 14.4 per second. Weren't we making 16 already? To keep up? That's 160 coal per second. Yeah, we were already going for a little bit less than a belt. So we probably can... Uh, let's not accidentally put in speed module 9s. That we don't have in our game. I'm just going to steal these. And... Paste that there. Without Robopod. Speed module. How fast would this be individually? 5 iron plate. 10 coal per second. I'm pretty sure we would need two stack inserters. To keep up with the coal. And how many machines would we need to support 14.4 grenades? Uh, about 14, or 15. Oh, it's exactly 14. Wow. Yeah, that's actually a really good ratio. Okay, so how much coal are we asking for? Let's double check. Uh, 144 per second? Oh yeah, I guess I shouldn't be... Su because the prods here... Uh, because of the prods here consuming the grenades, we're going to be consuming less coal to get the same result. That's cool. Even though grenades don't have prod modules, uh, don't take prod modules to make... Alright, so 14 of these needs more than 3 belts of coal and 2 belts of iron. What does that look like? Um, we've got plenty of space around the beacon and we need lots of belt throughput. Two belts of coal, one belt of iron. Uh, I guess we'll do... Because the iron... The iron is five per second, so we want a stack inserter for that. So this one's going to be iron. And... We can do coal this way. Uh, that one looks a bit different. And then we need coal on this side as well. And the output is only 7, I think. 7.2 per second. I could do belt weaving, but there's no need, and also carrying different levels of belt is uh, a bit of a hassle. 
And also some people feel it's heresy. Understandable. I don't hate the look of that. Um, although, since it's all coming onto one belt anyway, and each side is doing, or the whole thing is doing less than half of a belt, actually, uh, let's just bring it all together in the first place. Something like this, perhaps, might actually look a little bit less weird. I don't hate this either. Alright, so where is Iron Plate? It's way over here. Okay. Uh, we also need to make ammo, which means iron plate, steel, and copper. I'm pretty sure this is the only thing that copper goes into directly. Uh, so let's see if we can we can probably do all of our ammo under one beacon. So we need 14.4 piercing rounds per second. And I'm pretty sure we can't, we can't prod module ammo, right? Not even. So this one's going to be a firearm magazine. This one's going to be piercing. They normally go at a ratio of one to three, I think. Yeah. Do the speed modules change that? I would imagine not. They do not. Cool, cool, cool. How fast is this? 30 th 33 iron plate per second. <laughs> okay. Uh, the piercing round mags are a bit more sedate, except for copper, which needs 13 per sec 14 per second per machine. I might have to actually test this one uh, as opposed to just assuming that this will all work. Do you have a list of the mods you use? Yes. Uh, George Schalzer. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's basically space exploration plus some quality of life stuff plus a uh, crafting combinator. Everyone just calls me Jaws or Jaws. Okay. Fair enough. Jaws. Uh, Alright, so how many of these would we need to support our build over here? 14.4 per second. Uh, only two, actually. And I think we would need all six of them. Uh, yep. Alright, so we've got tons of space to make this happen, but if we're going to do this this way, we need many inserters cramming lots of stuff. More than half a belt of iron plate into these two for starters. And these ones need 13.75 copper plate each. I think that's going to be the harder part. Maybe. I guess they don't necessarily have to be very close together. Um, let me just cheat in some resources here. Iron plate. Copper plate.
And that's all the iron. Oh, we need 72 over there. And that's barely positive. And this is 66. 138 per second. Yeah, so we'll definitely have the throughput for iron. And copper is only two belts. We've got it up there. That's perfect. Coal. Steel. Steel is actually only going to be 16.5 per second. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, but what about the shape of this part? Uh, where is my unloader. I think I was using this one to begin with. And we're just going to have to split off two belts for that and two belts for that. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we should probably use a balancer. I don't know... Where's the corner? Do we need a lane balancer or no? Probably not. I think we'll play it safe. Hmm. We need two belts to go over here and two belts to come down this way, so there isn't really a standardized shape that's going to be terribly convenient here. Alright, let's just do it this way. Thirty-three per second. How many fully upgraded stack inserters does that take when we're taking from a belt, I wonder? Let's just void our final products. It would appear... Oh, I saw it drop to zero there, but I don't think it actually stopped. Yeah, I think this is working just fine. SCB-123, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so three, three stack inserters it is for that part. And then we need... So this is 33, and copper plate needs 13. Uh, I guess it has to be two stack inserters for each. The copper plate. We also need steel and firearm mags. We get 8.25 firearm mags per second out of this. I guess the two of them together does less than half of a belt. I put this in an awkward spot. Oh, wait, no. I forgot. Blue belts don't... Unlike a certain... Space belt, blue belts can reach eight tiles. That's actually perfect. It's a perfect spot? Yeah, it is. Alright, so... Why don't we... What would be the best way to do this? Let me just put in some resources here as well. Steel and coal. Although I think that's actually not enough coal to make it not. Whatever, this is fine. As long as we get the same throughput here that we would in game. I'm probably going to end up making 
possibly the exact same shape of output belts here. But it's still better than having a bunch of clutter to work around. Vince, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I would like to actually merge and split this. Come to think of it, I don't know if it's going to be possible, but I would love to make somehow like a wider... Uh, instead of long, it'll be wide version of a 4 to 4 balancer. Well, let's start with the usual. If... I don't think it's going to help. Because this is just the lane balancer part. Like, normally it's like this. But if we take exactly half of all of the inputs and give them an opportunity to swap sides, it becomes a lane balancer as well. But my first instinct was, could I get this to go out to the side? But it actually doesn't help anything, because we have to come back to the middle like this. Uh, if we made it asymmetrical, maybe. Also, in this instance, it's going to look more like this anyway. That's not quite right. Also, also... 10 call per second. I don't think we actually need quite as many inserters here as I originally thought. Uh, we can make it look a little bit more like this. You can also shrink that loop on the right by one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what I'm wondering is the main thing. Can I make the vertical um, profile of this smaller? And to do that, uh, I think I would have to this part somewhere else entirely, like here. This is going to get a little bit confusing pretty quickly, I think. And then this would have to, this has to go here and here. Let's get rid of that, so it's a little bit less confusing for now. So these two need to be... Maybe? Does that do what I think it does? Uh, so this splitter goes to the middle ones like so. These two go to the middle and the outside. This is the middle one from here, and it needs to do something like this. Oh, wait, no, that's right. Or maybe it would be easier to just bring that... No, the reason I didn't do that is because then we would have to... 
I could do it this way. And then... Can we possibly... So far this has only saved us one tile. But we might be able to do one better at least. Especially if I can move this up a bit. If this were to go here... And then... This goes here. Can I f find a way to make this part a little bit, bit less awkward? Um, probably. You can certainly rotate the rightmost splitter clockwise. I oh, like this. I think you are correct. Does that help? Maybe not. I would like for this not to have to... What if I make this more of a long thing? Um... So this goes here, and then... Oh, I can, I can use this space. That's what I should have done. Yeah, that looks cleaner as well. could also do it like that, although it doesn't really save us anything. Uh, this part doesn't need to stick out so much. Can we possibly... whoops. I'm pretty sure we can fit this in here, actually. And then we can save one more tile sticking out the side. Okay. Um, Alright, let's see if... Uh, let's confirm that that's actually balanced. I mean... Wait, what? Maybe not. Oh, it did the same thing here. Alright. And we know that one works. Same result. Wait, this one's different. Maybe it was the timing on one of the splitters. Uh, but yeah, that seems to work. Alright, so we made that two whole tiles uh, stubbier, and it sticks out way more to the sides. And it's asymmetrical. Tragic. Alright, let's connect this like so. And that can go there. That can go there. 
and so on. Whoops, not like that. And then Cole can go. Well, it depends where it would be more convenient to connect the iron, actually. I'm thinking maybe in the middle. Hmm. Maybe on the sides. That's a little bit awkward. I could make it go like this. That's not so bad, actually. And then the call connection is going to be very straightforward. Stop moving me around with belts, how dare you. Do I have the belt immunity equipment? I think I threw it away. Uh, why don't we just do it like this? Belt immunity equipment, Yoink. There we go. Okay. We can obviously move this up a tile. I don't know why I'm trying to save all this space. We really don't need to. And last but not least. Alright, does this reach? Nope, oh, one off. Rip in pepperonis. I don't mind the look of that though. Alright, so that's our grenades. And now we have the shape of all this as to not interfere with this stuff. Um. How am I going to merge the steel onto the correct half belts here? Because we can definitely, yeah, we can definitely just do half belts for these two. Underground on the right could be moved one to the left. Uh, that's true. There we go. A more bell. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Summit, welcome, welcome. Also, uh, and this is only 14.4 grenades per second, so we only need the one belt for that. Okay. Uh, I just don't, I, like, this is an easy to solve problem, but I just want to I just don't know what the most elegant solution is to get steel on this side and this side. My OCD thanks you, no worries. I could, this is sort of in the way, but I could splitter this like... Like, that could obviously just go there. And if another one were to... Or I could merge all of these onto one belt. But then they have, like, two different places they're trying to go. Oh, I, the beacon doesn't need to be in the middle. That might make things easier. Uh, we could move this over here, I guess. 
and then something like this. Wait, we only need, yeah, less than half a belt of each of these two, but two belts of copper. I think I'll put this here, actually. And individually they produce 2.7 per second. I'm pretty sure a long arm inserter can handle that, since we're at a stack size of three. test that theory. Uh, how many mags and 2.7 each? Theoretically, one stack inserter will handle that, but given its tendency to shove in... Oh, okay. No, it's happy with just one stack of each. It'll probably work. Let's see. Um, one stack inserter should be fine for that. Yeah, I don't think we're in danger of bottlenecking on the inserters here. So all we have left to do is input copper on this side. Uh, and since we know that since we know that three inserters can keep up with 33 iron plate per second off of a belt. Um, it shouldn't be a problem to just have copper plate coming in on the left side here at all. Oh! Oh, I stand corrected. It does actually slow down sometimes. Wait, how much? 16... No, it's going to be exact ratios, isn't it? So if this is blocked by stack inserters being silly... We could try tweaking the stack sizes. But I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Yeah, no. Why didn't I see this before when we tested this? I had, um... I had the machine going full speed with a void for an output. With three stack inserters, like so, default settings. And it wasn't having trouble keeping up. Maybe it wasn't under the beacon or something. Last assembler's running out of yellow. Yeah, it's because the iron plate input isn't fast enough. Uh, I guess we could add that here. And... What would this look like if we do that? Uh, we could do it this way. Okay, what about now? Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
And we should be able, with two or three stack inserters, to keep up with 13.75 copper plate per second. 33 just barely... Maybe not just barely. 33 required four. Um, I think we... I actually don't know if we need two or three. Let's, fi let's find out. And just to confirm... Oh, this is two belts of copper plate that we need to feed this. Copper plate... And copper plate. Alright. Just to confirm... These three require 41.25 per second, so one belt should be more than enough. Doesn't seem to be having any issue once it got saturated. Did you have a faster input belt? Nope. All right, that should be fine. So now we just need to bring these belts down. Uh, we should also merge spla splash. We should also merge slash split them. That actually lines up perfectly. Bottom red is stopping and starting. We'll have a look. This just for the look of it. Okay. Oh, it didn't get steel? Oh, it's probably because I had that void down there just to keep testing this at maximum speed. Might be because of the trashing underground? Yeah. That is looking pretty good. After playing Satisfactory, um, there's a bunch of little features from each game that one wishes the other game had. And right now I'm wishing I had the stats on this machine that tells me if... I don't know how long it looks back, but it tells you 100% if this thing has been consistently producing without stopping. Alright, that's looking pretty good though. And it's a very, very simple layout here. Come to think of it, um, it would look a little bit awkward, but we could probably do all that under the one beacon. But I think instead we'll steal this beacon for stone walls. Except I think the stone walls are so fast that um, we probably don't even need a beacon. Oh, this is plus 200% speed? Wait, what? Uh, plus 200% power consumption, rather. Uh, I don't want that. No! How many... This is eight speed modules. And the rest is efficiency. And it is tier 6. Oh, because this uses prods. So the prod is... Plus 140%. And the speed is plus 2... Uh, plus 70%. I mean, 
energy consumption plus 200%. Um, do I want... Do I want to add some efficiency modules here? Give me those. Wait, what? Did it just... No, there they are. That is minus 80%. How many grenades do we need? 14.4 per second. Rip perfect ratio, but I think if we add a couple more down here, that's 15.6 actually. And less than two belts of iron, less than four belts of coal, that should be fine. It also means we don't have an odd number on this side, so it'll be a bit tidier. Um, so something like this. And this part will be a little bit different. Wait, why do we have so many... Oh, I didn't get rid of the extra inserters on this side. Let's just fix this side first. This goes here. And then copy, paste, flip. And this part as well. That should be fine. Alright, so we are net positive on grenades. Uh, how many mags do we need? 14.4. And this is 16, actually. We might just not have to change anything here. I hope. Wait, we've already got... It's seven speeds that we need. Wait, no, not like that. What's our rate now? 15.6 per second? Cool. So we are exactly the same amount net positive on piercing round mags as grenades. Interestingly enough. And that'll only make it easier for the inserters to keep up. Just barely, actually. It makes almost no difference. OMG individual stats would be amazing. Yeah. Although, I guess... I don't know. Would that add up pretty quick with the scale of Factorio? Um, and drain UPS? Um, we just need stone brick as well. 28.8 .8 stone wall, rather. And we can't put... Uh, what's in here? Sameth, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, this is probably going to be ridiculously fast. Per machine. 15... Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 80, uh, 80 stone brick per second in one machine. That's a bit much. Have you considered mods that unload trains in one-tile spaces or such, or do you view that as too easy? Uh, I kind of... Okay, it's not so much that I view it as too easy, especially with, even if I say so, how experienced I am with getting stuff out of trains. 
uh, I think with this playthrough I've both learned a lot and pretty thoroughly demonstrated that you know this is this is a problem that I can solve um, in a future playthrough I think I might use some of the mods that make it very very easy to get stuff out of trains with high throughput and more importantly far fewer inserters chests circuitry and so on uh, just because that stuff adds up with uh, UPS. Uh, but the other half of why I didn't do that this time uh, is I, I want as much stuff as possible to be recognizable to a vanilla Factorio player. Um, and giant chests aren't so bad weird structures that take all of the resources out of, out of trains, maybe a little bit more. Uh, how many walls do we need for this? Only 28.8 per second. So literally just two of these would do the job. Um, but it would be very, very difficult to get all of the stone bricks input. Can we even do it off of belts? Yeah, that's why I asked, because there's mods that are essentially belt ends to trains. So they just feed the belt in and out without inserters and doesn't use as much UPS. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, so we need two belts. Considering we needed four stack inserters to keep up with 31... Or maybe not 31, I think it was 33 per second. I doubt three can keep up with 31. Let's see. Uh, I think I stand corrected. That little bit of speed difference uh, was all it took. So that we need one less inserter. So it's a pretty good rule of thumb to say a stack inserter can do 10 per second from a belt, I think. It can do slightly more than that. Program wise, it's just one inserter with like 3600 degrees rotation a second, or how much it needs to put. 45 stuff out a second. Yeah, but also it's a lot more UPS friendly to take stuff out of a container, right? Because the inserter doesn't have to... Uh, let's slow this down a bit. The inserter doesn't have to look for one item after another after another on the belt. Um, it just... In one tick, it just picks up an entire stack from a container. Alright, um... Oh, and putting stuff onto the belt has slightly similar issues. Alright, so we need two full belts. That is... Four, if not five, inserters on each side. Um, let's do it like this. If it's five inserters on each side, then we're going to have a problem when it comes to symmetry. Let's just avoid this, and... Uh, stone brick is what we need. Brick. And brick. Alright. Is this able to go full speed? Wow, that's fast. Good grief. Uh, I think we are good, actually. 
78 stone brick per second. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's right. Because it's actually like, it's a bit less than two belts. So about 40 per second on each side. We can definitely do that with four stack inserters. Assembly machine go burr. Okay. So now we just ask ourselves, what is the cleanest layout to do this? Um, I think I would like to have something like this, actually. I know we're not going to keep up with a long arm inserter. I'm actually surprised... Oh, onto a belt it's going to be different. We might need more output. Uh, I probably shouldn't have deleted those uh, spawners. Also, that was a slight mistake. I have some random memory around how how you can adjust stack size to optimize how much multiple inserters can supply. I'd definitely like to know that. Okay, so... Wait, the input didn't keep up. Why not? Hold on. I could have sworn we just tested this with a void, a void chest output. And belt input has no trouble keeping up. It keeps, it keeps flickering at a hundred stone brick in the input. So this has no trouble keeping up, and it looked like, what, oh no, it's because the output isn't keeping up, okay, that does make sense, that's fine. Alright, so we need a different layout here, um, something like... It's going to be symmetrical, that is. Something like this, perhaps? And... Hmm. This could go here. This is going to be a bit awkward. Alright, is that going to work consistently? Because it takes time to put it on the belt, yeah. Um, it looked for a second to me like the stone wall was actually being output. And I didn't know why. It, it's weird that when the output gets blocked, this thing gets all the way down to zero. But... It's no big deal. Yeah, I think this is close to the cleanest look that we're going to get here. So that is 31 per second, and we need 28. Fantastic. Um, can we maybe line this up here-ish? Let's put in our cheat trains so we can see that this is all working properly. Um, how did I have it laid out before? Because I might not want to change it. Oh. I'm actually curious as to... Uh, 
Yeah, I think we have room to do it like that. Let me just cut and paste this so it's somewhere cozy. And then if we don't have to change this bit all the better, perhaps. This bit's going to be a bit awkward anyway. Unless I build something a bit more custom. But parts that overlap the existing parts are definitely not a bad thing. There I go more. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Like, for example, if you have three inserters, you can set the last one with the lowest stack size, which makes it insert a few more times with a few with fewer items per swing, but more overall amount, because it's waiting for items... It's waiting less for items to fill the stack size. Also, it'll, it'll decide to input sooner. It won't let the input items drop down to a lower amount if the stack size is smaller. Is that right? Because it's waiting less for items to fill the stack size. That might be false, but I remember that there were things like that. Yeah, I think I remember probably Nyron Wolf mentioning um, uh, mentioning having like 10 and 8, or no, I think it was 12 and 8 was the best for two stack inserters. Uh, but I don't remember all the details perfectly or anything. We can probably put this here-ish. Well, hmm. Firstly, I want to make sure we've got room to do the mischievous things I have in mind to do with belts. Uh, it is grenade and piercing round magazines that I want to do the magic belt sharing thing with. So, let me see if I can just do this from memory. We have a block on one side, so that we bottleneck it. And then we recycle. We have input priority from the, on the recycled stuff. And then... So if we have like... Actually, we can demonstrate this very, very clearly. Piercing round mags. And output here. So a half belt becomes a quarter belt very, very consistently with this. Because we have input strict input priority on this side where the recycling happens. We have it bottlenecked on this part. We, we preserve which side of the belt things are on. So we're bottlenecked on a half belt right here. And then we output 50% of a half belt here, 50% of a half belt here. And this part will just slow down and stop uh, whenever it's saturated because this has got input priority. Uh, if we do the same thing with grenades... and keep them on the same side of the belt. Uh, we should then be able to just merge those. And then we get one to one to one to one to one all the time.
uh, but even being as it may that we put in a perfect ratio, uh, we will need a loop to prevent this from eventually jamming. I think I'd like to put this here. Okay, so... I guess I'll just put this part here. That should all be on the same side. Yes, good. And we need grenades. We need grenades to be forced to be on the same side of the belt as well. Um, block one side. So grenades will have to be on the lower side. That's inconvenient. I could move this down a little bit. In fact, it would be cleaner looking if I did. Oh. Would that be a problem? It depends what side of the belt things are on. Um, it has to be on the left side. I think we can squeeze this through here. No, we're one tile short. Rip. How about up here instead? Why is that? Oh, right. Oh, right. Whoops. No iron plate today, thank you. Uh, and we need grenades to be on the bottom side. So... Like this. That just happens to work out, although it looks pretty weird. Yeah, I don't like it. Let's let's just do that aesthetically. Also, rotating the belt into the inserter increases its throughput because the items travel slightly closer to it. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, we've got one, two, three input belts. Which... Might work out okay. Oh. No, I would have to recycle... This is going to be a little bit tricky. Well, not tricky, actually. Let's put this thing here. Or maybe back here a bit. If we have our input belt go here, and then here. What's the throughput? One full belt of military science. And we only need the one belt of input. So I think it would be a lot more convenient. If we do the input where the output was. Uh, 
and then we could bring this up here. And the recycling should be relatively clean. Maybe it would be better to do it down here where there's a bit more room. But we need to filter off grenades. And then... It would actually be very convenient to squeeze them in here. Since that's... That's the recycle part right there already. Do this. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And something very similar for hissing round mags. I might move this a little bit. Pretty clean. I like this better. Uh, and last but not least, well, actually, we could make the uh, we could make the stone walls get recycled last, or we could just not have the stone walls get recycled at all because they don't need to. Also, we only need, we specifically need the stone walls to be, oh no, oh no, we actually need more than, more than half a belt of stone wall. Uh, we do need less than half a belt. Uh, we need more than a quarter of a belt for grenades and piercing round mags, actually. So the idea that we could snake one belt through all of this, uh, that's actually false. So we kind of need to do this twice, or rather we could not... No, this is going to give us a quarter belt. So we would need two of these contraptions if we're going to do it this way. I don't really want to do two of them, but on the other hand, I quite like making stuff like this. Hmm. We don't need the recycling to come back to both of them. So, I guess... This is starting to look kind of weird. I kind of like it though. Wait, that's not quite right. Is it? This one is going to give us... Yeah, the... there's no point in having this split into two. Because the throughput here is going to be limited to a half belt. So actually, this one... can look like this. And then... Uh, why don't I move you somewhere a bit more comfortable to edit? Uh, 
If we're not going to recycle the walls at all. We'll need something to stop the walls at the end. Actually, no we don't. It doesn't... If the walls come through on the opposite side of the belt through here, it shouldn't matter at all. Okay. I don't like that I'm probably going to have to move this pylon substation at this rate. Uh, we don't need these two. We do, however... This is more than half a belt. So I need to convert full belt into two half belts. And they need to be on the same side as well. Which is the opposite side of the other two resources. And I can actually just merge those in with these two. In fact, it'd be easier if we do it like this. Split that that way. What a convoluted con contraption. I kind of love it though. So then we should get... Fifty-fifty. Wait, why is this one double? Are we fully saturated now? Yep, 50-50 grenades and piercing mags on each side. And with two belts. Okay, uh, the only thing left is to loop them through and let them come back for recycling. And it shouldn't matter at all if... if we bring the walls back through. So we don't have to add a splitter at the end to, to tell them not to recycle. Oh, is that a problem? I don't know if it will be. Let's find out. Uh, so, let's say we put this down here. What would be the best shape, though, if we have two input belts that have to loop back? Uh, I think I like this. The loop back doesn't have to have full throughput. So, what if we have... Outputs like so. And these two are inputs, except we need to... Uh, we need to merge them, preserving which is on which item is on which side of the belt. Mm -hmm. 
Should be fine. Uh, it's going to be a little awkward, but that's okay. All right. enough. I don't actually want to respawn. Why is your factory so small? Uh, we're just doing some editing. Uh, we're, just, we're doing some stuff, stuff in sandbox before we jump back into our game. Okay. Uh, that's looking a bit weird. I think we only need fast inserters to pick this stuff up. It's like 1.2 per second total. And then output to here. the wrong way around actually. Uh, so we have a... yeah. We have everything being output to different sides of the belt equally. No need to worry too much about that. Actually, let me do it this way. If I connect this here, that's going to change which side of the belt it's on. And last but not least... So need outputs on this side. And finally, we need to recycle because no matter if we give things the perfect ratio, even if it is one, one, and two, uh, even if it is just one and one on the side of the belt, it can get messed up. The machines will mess it up eventually because of the way they take more items than they need. So that's why this stuff goes back through, gets filtered, has input priority on the recycling, and then comes out nice and balanced. Actually, let me turn off the belt immunity. Oh my god, it's so hard to... there we go. So you can see very clearly there that we've got uh, grenade, piercing round grenade, alternating every time. Cool. That looks pretty neat, even if I say so. And we appear to be getting just under 45 items per second, 
T consistently. Uh, perfectly consistently, actually. What's our rate? 44.92 per second. Uh, 2.7, 2.8k per minute. Yeah. I do believe this is working consistently. Okay. Uh, we don't have any cheat things left over except for the train inputs, right? And the power thing. All of the other input stations are still in the same place they used to be. So we can paste this pretty much over our existing block. Let's update this one. And the only purple things we're removing is the accumulator and the cargo wagons. Uh, I could throw in a few more. Now, I, I kind of want to be able to see uh, this part showing how messed up the uh, the items get by the end of the belt. This is the entire reason that we need it to be a loop. But over here... We don't need so much straight belt. All right, let's update this one. Fantastic. On to the next one. Well played, thank you. All right, so we got three to go. Blue sides uh, is looking pretty straightforward. Not like uh, purple science or mid uh, military science. It's just sulfur, multi-cylinder engine, and advanced circuit. Uh, ratios are 1, 2, and 3. But we put sulfur and multi-cylinder engines on a shared belt. And I don't see why we would change that very much. Alright, so let's grab our familiar layout with as many science uh, machines that we can fit under one beacon comfortably. Uh, wait, it was yellow science, right? No, blue science. Dope. And I'll be needing some power before that flashing takes my mind. Let's do the usual layout of substation pylon. If we put this in the middle, what's our rate? Less than one belt of transport. Wait, I was supposed to be doing blue signs. That's weird. Why does that not have a recipe? I think it. Yeah, no, it was from the copy paste, wasn't it? One, two, three. And. 28 per second. We can do this on half a belt of multi-cylinder engines, much less uh, sulfur, and a full belt, just a bit more than half a belt of advanced circuits. 
uh, here we have two belts of red circuits, uh, and one whole belt of each of these two resources. So that's pretty much going to work out perfectly. Um, I might even... That's one whole belt of transport belt. Uh, I might have been wrong about green science here, or I forgot to fix this part up for the throughput. We'll worry about that later. Okay. So we have one, two, three input belts. One belt of advanced circuits, half a belt of either of these. We should be able to just... Uh, that looks a little weird. Why don't we do a corner balancer here? That almost lines up perfectly. Hmm. What's our output? Less than two belts. I think just to make uh, make things a bit easier with the inputs, we'll swap the input and output around. now. So if we go one, two, three, four inputs on each side. to grid relative here. That would be a bit easier. Fantastic. And then on the other side as well. Uh, power consumption is minus 40%. Alright, so the total is less than one belt on each side. We can just merge that like normal, and it's no big deal that it's coming from three belts. Whereas on the input, uh, it makes it significantly easier that we're doing a base two number. that's a bit more consistent. Let's 
this will probably end up here. And then... Inputs. Don't forget about those. Okay. So we got four, t four belts to eight. Much, much neater. Let's just put in a regular... Oh, we don't want a lane balancer here. We want a regular belt balancer that's not going to swap the sides of the items. Whoops. So that can go there. And then I think it'll be easier if I drag this out first. Auto save. All right, so we're going to split this like so. This one like so. This one like so. And that's right. Last but not least, this goes here. And I almost forgot the part where we need red circuits as well. Uh, I say almost, I kind of did though. still have the beacon reach. We can obvi uh, obviously have... that's an output though. Never mind. If we move this out one tile... Input goes here, input goes here move this out one tile. So it's only actually two tiles wider, and the beacon still touches everything. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's do a little snap to grid relative action here. Nice and easy. Um... I think I'll do it like this, and then these ones are going to change. Snap to grid relative, hold shift, and quick as you like. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, output is, uh, let's remove this for now. There's no way we're going to have that first line, uh, first belt line up all cozy like, that's okay. This goes here. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. It really doesn't matter which belt is which in terms of the inserters keeping up.
in this? No. It cannot reach across. Uh, I might change this so that the belt is on the other side. Just so we get a really nice convenient connection here. Fiddly little button. Uh, this part should actually... Maybe I should move this outer tile, just because of this bit. No, it would still have to... It's going to be awkward the way this one merges, though. Um, I guess this one has to be more like that. And then if I... Connect this over here, we're going to get stuck with a half belt. So that should probably just go down one tile. Not the absolute best aesthetically, but I can live with it. I'd be happier if these lined up. There we go. What if we put this splitter up here? I think that would look a little less scuffed. Yeah, I definitely like that better. Also, why is this part... Oh, I see. Wait, what? I think I pasted this over stuff that was already there. That's better. Okay. So... I think with the red circuits, well, we could put them here. That lines up really well. We need one belt to support the right side of the block. Bottom left corner, long-handed, has no belt. Indeed, thank you. Uh, we carbon, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, that doesn't have to go that far. We'll put the next one of these here. least. Wait, that was... I was doing this on the right side. Yeah, it was there actually. Uh, why don't we put in some magic trains 
so that we can see exactly where our resources are going very clearly. Sulfuric acid, I mean sulfur, and multi cylinder engine. Okay. This is one off. And this goes over here. I think that side is already looking good. We can do this one on the left side. And I guess that makes just as much sense. Alright, so this splitter goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, and last but not least, I think that actually lines up perfectly. Fantastic. Perfect max length there as well. Cool. And let's make sure we... It's going to take a minute, but... Let's make sure this doesn't pile up. I want to see if this saturates. It should saturate. 54 advanced circuit per second. Less than one belt of multi-cylinder. Yeah, it shouldn't be an issue. Oh, it's already saturated. I was going to speed it up. But it looks like the belt's caught up while I wasn't looking. And we should have all of these machines going... Oh yeah, that's a really slow recipe. Hmm. I guess I could have gone for more speed modules... But then that's kind of ludicrous power consumption. It would be more UPS friendly though. But we're going to be trimming this down because all science is bottlenecked on the top tier science anyway. But if we wanted uh, 56 chemical science packs per second, uh, this would be what we go for. All right, let's blueprint that. Except for this stuff. And two to go. Purple is going to be the nightmare. Yellow, not so much, I think. Purple goes here. Yellow goes here. What goes into yellow signs? Uh, yeah, we don't have to do any processing on the spot for yellow signs. It's just 3, 1, and 3. And a really slow recipe. We could probably... Three, two, and one, twenty-four seconds. Three, one, and three, thirty-three seconds. What's the slow thing? Playing robot frames. It's a little bit different of a shape from this.
but I bet with how slow it's going to be, we could actually just copy-paste what we just did. Uh, did I remove the old power poles from this? No, I didn't. Uh, let's do that now. Big electric substation, get out of there. And same goes for all of this. Throw in some lovely island substations. I can actually fit this one here. Oh, it was already there. Okay. Uh, why don't we copy all of this and see where we end up if we just change the recipe to yellow signs. Get some power. Don't need the random robo ports. Got the tier six modules. Let me just check. I didn't like accidentally have any tier 3 modules in these other builds, I don't think. Nope. Looking good. Okay. What's our rate? Uh, processing units and LDS are at almost one belt, and flying robot frame is considerably slower. We've got one belt of processing unit and LDS here, so I'm pretty sure we can just uh, cheat a little bit and use the exact same layout. Processing unit and flying robot frames. I guess I didn't add my usual underground belts to this. How would that reach? Middle's gonna look a little bit awkward. Yeah, I can't be bothered with that. Oh. This part's looking a little bit unfortunate. Doesn't seem to be an issue. What's wrong with this one? No LDS or processing units. Oh, it just hasn't saturated yet. I'm pretty sure. Let's speed things up a little bit. Why is it taking that long to get... Nope, it looks good now. Oh, 
output is actually blocked here. Wait. No, yeah, the output is blocked. Oh, is this a lot faster? 96 per second. As opposed... That, that's more than two belts. Uh, as opposed to 56. Okay. Uh, we need, like, ten of these. For six per second. 96.2. I could remove the bottom row. That'd be slightly less than two belts. amount of actions just to do that. Eighty-eight per second. That's pretty good. Left input F up. Oh. Oh, I think there was already stuff here. Wait, so how... So this still got saturated? Uh, that's weird. Let's copy this part. Yeah, I'm surprised it got saturated. I guess it was trying to output more than the machines could handle as well, but, well, I didn't look at it close enough before I deleted it to totally figure it out. Cool, so that is going to be yellow sites. Select new contents. Don't need the cheat items. And we're good. And the last and definitely not least is purple signs. Hmm. Where's our power? So we need we need to make prod ones with red and green circuits. We need to make rail. No, we're importing rail. That's something at least. Uh, we need to make electric furnaces, which means we need to make uh, stone furnaces and steel furnaces because this is space exploration. So one, two, three, four. Well, more like two, but a chain of three over this side. Uh, different prerequisites that we have to build for this. Not to mention quite a bit of belt spaghetti. Alright, let's make it happen. Um, I may want to keep this part. What is this? Stone brick. Nope. Hmm. Just the belts, perhaps. 
I, I can always paste it down again if I need the reference. The one thing I don't want to have to move is the chests. Because that is tens of thousands of items. The belts are a lot more negotiable. But I will probably stick with this much. Maybe. Why are my items full? Okay. Uh, first of all, let's copy... Wait, let's look at the recipe. Purple science. Thirty rail, one electric furnace, one productivity. That's kind of crazy. Um, I have no doubt we're going to want two belts in, one belt out. So we'll probably start by copying this. Uh, let me see where that fits first. If we have this part in the middle. We probably will move this down, actually. Up science. Oh, didn't I end up making that an odd number? Unacceptable. Um, for real though, I'll check the throughput first. This is just a little bit under one belt, actually. That's a little bit over. The other two inputs are trivial, but 300 rail per second? Uh, if we have one, two, three, four input belts... That's actually way too slow. I think we're just probably not going to make that much purple science in one block. We've got rail coming in here. This is 180 per second. How many machines does it take to consume all of that? Exactly 42. It's a sign. This is what we're doing. Uh, so that's 11. Wait, what? No, derp. 10.5. Uh, Buffalo Kittens? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, if we do 10 machines each... Wait. Oh, I multiplied that by 6. Uh, seven. We need seven per column. There we go. That will consume literally all of the rail coming in. Uh, on one... Well, I guess the rail needs to be at the near belt. We need to pick up 4.2 per second. A stack inserter can manage that. Um, let's do an upgrade planner. I can actually just use the default one here. But I don't want to do that to the outputs. Output speed is less than 1 per second. Uh, well, this part doesn't work, because we need a stack inserter to collect the rail. 
Hmm. What if we go for... Something a little bit like what I've done before. Where if we need two belts that have full... Uh, if, if we have two belts that need to have high input, we do it like this. But maybe we can do something similar between here with alternating sides. Maybe. The repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So just to confirm, no, this actually needs more than one belt of rail. I might have to change the shape of this. I could just make it wider. We've got, like, what, six tiles over here? Rezod? Rezodk? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so let's say this goes here. No, we're, we're not going to keep it all under the beacon if I do that. How many would it take? It's 10.5, isn't it? To consume 45 rail. Uh, that's unfortunate. I wanted to do longer columns. Hmm. I can't do 11 at any of the columns. Maybe we could just not consume all 180 rail per second. That is technically an option. So if this goes here, we can have the slow inputs in the middle. Uh, and what's this? 20? We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Wait, what? Something is amiss. So that is 171 rail per second. Rail goes in uh, here, 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 and here. Prod ones and uh, electric furnaces go in like so, and we should have no trouble. Yeah, the inserters should have no trouble keeping up with that. second. Considerably less than one belt. For almost four belts of rail. Well, what can you do? Why is... Oh, I see. 
All right, we can put this all the way down here quite comfortably. I might mirror that, actually. Actually, no, I won't. Uh, let me see how this bit's going to look. I think we'll do our output like this. Uh, actually, considering the throughput, it's a little bit more than half a bell. And this part here is six. So we can actually just do it like that. It's actually not a problem. Also, like that, I think. gives us the negative 40% power consumption. We'll put this nice and cozy down here. And then uh, we need a whole lot of green circuits and a little bit of red to make our prod ones. I'll just put this in line. Oh, this is rail as well. Oh, that means we actually have, oh, we don't need this one now. That means uh, this block can actually do like 50 purple signs per second. did the old one do? Almost 50. Yeah, exactly 370 rail per second. But we'll be able to get more out of it because higher tier prods. Assuming we can actually fit all of that somewhere. It's kind of a big ask. If I were to put this here... No, I would prefer... I was going to squeeze the other one's output down this way, but I would prefer if they can merge and split. So something like this. If we put another one of these up here, is there a universe where we can actually get all of these input belts to reach? Well, we can obviously get the rail there. I don't think we're going to need many machines to get our prod ones. We could just squeeze those in here. Activity 1. We can give it some... I don't have any speed modules, actually. Give me these ones. How fast are you? Uh, 
4.12 prods per second. And we only need 11.43. So three of these? Yeah, that's pretty good actually. We need a belt and a half of electronic circuits to support it though. We've got... Huh. Wait, what's our... What's our rate for all of this? 53. We're not using all the rail. If our prods are better, we should definitely have... Why did I delete that? Uh, we should definitely have enough circuit throughput to support these are tier 3 prods and we're using tier 6 prods now this one needs 12 prods per second as opposed to 11 point something thirteen and sixty five I guess this really does do... I know if all of these were greens, we could get 90 per second easily. So I guess uh, it's not that much of a stretch to think that this can give us 62 green circuits per second. Uh, and the red circuits actually squeeze through this way. Interesting choice. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's already there. Perfect. Okay. In that case... Wait, how many red circuits do we need? Only 12.3 per second. Uh, I can see why I didn't squeeze it through this way, though. Why don't we just do this? And then... Who's there? We're going to need, I think... Ooh. We're gonna need, like, probably two, hopefully only two, stack inserters per second. I need more space. We've got plenty of space vertically. So what if I put this here? And make sure there's some room between them. And actually... If I do it like this... I think the inserters always put stuff onto the same side, whether we do it this way or that way. Uh, I need some more infinity loaders. There we go. Actually, let's just put some trains here. So this has green circuit, red circuit, and rail. In Nalvis Orbit is one rail grid for a material slash fluid enough? Or have you used multiple rail blocks per resource? Uh, for most things, one has been enough. There are a few things that I needed to duplicate. 
Although, I think all the things that I duplicated were actually, um... Uh... Just bringing things up from Nowverse, actually. Alright, so we need... Uh, two belts. Green circuits here, actually. I can do this one here, perhaps. And this one... Oh yeah, I wanted to confirm... So these are both outputting to the same side. Not that I think it's going to matter because of the way that we're going to merge this later. Um, how about... Instead of this... We squeeze this through here and get confused. Cool. Uh, I might actually have to bring this all the way around. Yes, we could tuck that in a little bit. The red inserter actually can't keep up with this. Uh, that is a little bit of a problem. I think. It's not going to be an issue. We just have to figure out how to get the red circuits in faster. Uh, I guess I could do it this way. I think a fast inserter will be more than an, more than sufficient here. this trap again. Wait, why is this not move? Oh, I see. Oh, we need to split and merge that as well. There we go. Uh, actually, it should be fine if I do it like this. do we need? 61. So this, these two need less than one belt. Yeah, that should be fine. Green in blue undergrounds and weave the red in. Uh, I, um, the main reason I like to avoid belt weaving is it just means I have to have the spiders carry more different types of items. That is... You're kidding. Green inserters... Uh, green circuit inserters can't keep up. 
didn't we get like 31 per second in consistently with three stack inserters? So why is 20 per second too fast for two of them? I do not understand that. What if I set them both to a slightly smaller stack size? Did that make it more consistent? Why are we getting five at a time if I set the stack size to ten? That's really strange. Why are inserters like this? The gaps from the bottom inserter trying to grab from the closer lane. Except we had three in a row and that was doing 30 earlier. What if... not like they're not doing any worse because the second one was pulling from the first one's reserves right maybe eight will do it indeed so it stutters a bit yeah uh, I guess we could have three... I, I don't... I really don't understand why... Three was enough to keep up with 30 per second here, and we tested that thoroughly. But two is not enough to keep up with 20. And it's just a straight belt. Uh, let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... And then... Oh, I guess these could be closer. And I'll put that one there. Also... Hmm, these two have to meet in the middle. Alright, that's doing the trick. Hi there, Stargot. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, Captain Chickenel. Welcome, welcome. 
and Bondoggo. Kinda brave, Krasus. No name. I think I missed a few. Back to planning. Yeah, we're just updating our old science. So it's going to use fewer machines. And we're going to use way fewer than this, but I just wanted to build it as if we're going to use maximum throughput at some point. Uh, Fritley, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Alright, so... Oh, I don't have... We might not have to take advantage of our wide 4 to 4 balancer that we just made. I don't think we've got a whole lot of tiles to spare down here. Let me put this here for now. And we can put that out to the side like so. Um, I want these two to go through a splitter. Oh, that's this one. I'm going to change how that part works. then how much closer can we okay the whole thing only needs 11.3 per second for prod one and electric furnace so this part can just meet here but we need to have room to squeeze in our rail Can this go up a tile? I don't think so. So let's see. I think at best, this is how close we can go. And we'll have rail coming in from either side. Oh, this is giving it beacon sickness. Um, I can move the beacon up a little bit. That's not a problem. We'll definitely need an underground here, though. So if we go all out and use the minimum vertical tiles, uh, I think we do just about have room for our 4 to 4 here. I could always just get rid of most of this and do the 4 to 4 balancing over this way instead. if necessary. These two go here, this goes here, uh, we 
we can change this a little bit as well. Well, this would then have to loop back this way. It's a little bit awkward either way. Uh, I think this way actually might leave more room for... I could be wrong. <laughs> for getting that other input into place. Also... No, these undergrounds are in the way. We can't just loop this around. Pretty sure there's enough room up here, just barely, to squeeze these two where they need to go, though. So we're going to have uh, this entire area. Well, first of all, that rail needs to get somewhere. Uh, maybe it would have been easier. You know what? This part, this part's a mess. I don't like it. Uh, we're gonna remove all of this. It's gonna be easy enough to add the red circuit stuff back in, and we're gonna go. 180 per second, right. Red circuits. Uh, red circuits are just going to have to squeeze through here. Which is going to be a little awkward. How do you call for a train when you're low on materials? Uh, I'm using logistic train network. Or do you mean these uh, infinity cargo wagons? Uh, the mod is called editor extensions. Um, and if you have that mod installed and you start a new game, you've actually got an option to go to this uh, extra sandboxy place with all the lab towels and stuff. Okay, that means we can move this up a bit. Which means it's going to be pretty trivial to get rail where it needs to go. Two tiles off. Rip. Okay. So, do we have room for this part though? One, two, Three and four, I guess so. Just barely. Could I have put it any closer? Yeah, I could put this one tile down. I might yet do that. Uh, and then we've got the beacon sickness again. I put this here, does it have coverage? Yes, it does. Cool. 
and then we can very easily have our rail input there and maybe even scavenge another tile so that we can get this where it needs to go. Um, I don't think we need an 8 to 8 balancer, not really. It's also very large. But probably no smaller than... What am I looking for? Then a pair of four to fours. We could do this boomerang one here. And just about anything over here. How about a corner? Oh, this goes way down here, actually. Hmm. If I move this down a tile... It doesn't really necessarily give us what we need for this part. This one's going to be a little awkward. But, hmm. If that goes there, that goes there. This could actually come out here. And then we have room for this. And... Uh... Hmm... I need the electric furnaces to come from over here and somehow make their way to here to get merged with this belt. That red circuit thing is a problem, but we could just... Put it through like this. Spaghetti. I think that's it. And then a uh, belt balancer here. Can I do a corner in there? Yeah, uh, it's a little bit in the way of this one. So I think we'll go down here.
What is going on there? This looks a little bit tidier, I feel like. Oh, and I didn't do a balancer, but we can fit that in almost anywhere. Like, probably here, actually. So this is green circuits. This is the same except for red circuits. Uh, heat shielding. Alright, before we go and do everything we need to build electric furnaces, uh, let's do a little resource cheat and make absolutely sure before we go to the trouble of building that, uh, that there isn't some belt throughput issue that we haven't caught yet. And this might be getting a little bit full, so let's add some infinity cargo wagons, and we're just going to use those to void the output. I don't see any problems. doesn't take long for... wait, that's all messed up. It doesn't take long for the slow resources to get saturated. And we already had the rail there. Okay, last but definitely not least, we need to make three kinds of uh, furnace, because in space exploration you need a stone furnace to make a steel furnace, and you make need a steel furnace to make an electric furnace. Um, I guess if I was really trying to uh, be a bit pedantic and efficient and stuff, I could try building these machines just on the side of these ones. How many do we need? Electric furnace, 11.43 per second. And one of these machines makes only 1.65. So yeah, no. Not even a, remotely an option. I would like to fit all of this under one beacon if I can, though. How many do we need? Uh, probably... Seven. No, eight. It was 11.6 something, right? 11.55... 11.43. Oh, okay. So seven of these should give us net positive electric furnaces, just barely. I don't love that it's an odd number, but I don't think we're going to need to use up all of the space here anyway. 
This one needs advanced circuits as well. This is the only place we're getting advanced circuits from. Um, I don't have room to split this off from here. I wish I'd realized this sooner. I don't think I have a way to squeeze the advanced circuits out through here. We don't really have a spare tile here either. Or down here. Uh oh. This could be a little bit of a problem. I think I see a solution though. If the advanced circuits... No, we can't... They have to go down this way because they can't cross from here to here because we've already got undergrounds. Hmm. Quite the conundrum. So close and yet so far. 57 point... Wait. Do we have more advanced circuits being dropped off somewhere? No? That doesn't seem right. Electric furnace, advanced circuits. For some reason I can't interact with the LTN train stops. Saying not operable, but I've changed every station now. How do you mean, changed every station? Did I just build this wrong last time? Where, where are we getting advanced circuits from here? You know what, it'll be a lot easier to tell if I just do this. Okay, copy, paste. This one's steel. This one's empty. Didn't line that up very well. And stone and stone brick. Okay. So red circuits come from over here. Is this really... Oh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stack inserters from a chest to belt. This only uses 13. And this is 63. I guess? Hmm. I'm a little bit surprised that that's enough red circuit. Okay. Uh, I mean, worst case scenario, I could probably... No, this station is in a weird spot. I was going to say I could add a station here, but not really. Part of the challenge here is we don't want to move these boxes around in our save. Is there some way to get red circuits through? Uh, probably. Definitely. It's going to be a little bit ugly. But it's better than starting over. So we're just going to have to add some undergrounds here. And then we can... 
Uh, red circuits through as we please. Except I've already bottlenecked it on one belt. I think we can fix that pretty easily though. Um, so this needs more than one. 57. Therefore... This, this one only needs... 12.37. So we're well under two belts here. So we're just going to do it like this. And I guess we did need both of these tiles. Alright, we did it. That's our red circuits getting to the other side again. One off. Does it matter if we're not taking from each lane equally? I don't think so. I could squeeze a lane balancer in. Probably not, actually. Hello, this looks like a test world, indeed. Nope, I am not here. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I can definitely put a lane balancer here, actually. This is actually the easiest spot to put one. And then... Except that makes it a bit awkward, the way I put that there. To split this off. I could do a long one here instead. Perhaps. Uh, maybe a wide one. Yeah, we've got room for a wide. This is a good fit. Uh, so that goes there. And this merges again. This side goes straight through without changing which side things are on the belt. And on this side things can swap if it's backed up. Uh, so that's going to... I mean, if we only consume from one side of the belt down here, it's not actually going to be a problem. Okay, that goes there. And I guess this gets moved back a bit. Oh, this is the biggest spaghetti challenge that I've had to deal with for a while. Alright, so we got our mostly two belts of red circuits here. Won't be a problem to keep up with that. Uh, we have four inputs for this. Uh, steel furnaces. We need 11.55 per second of those. What's the recipe look like? 5 seconds, 3 seconds, 0.5 seconds. So what's the ratio going to be, I wonder? Uh, what's our target? 11.5? 11.0. Tragic. Alright, so we need 5 of these. And it's one to one, right? 
So we should just aim for 11.5 for... Wow. Um, okay. Uh, just the one machine for stone furnaces. Except it needs 82.5 stone per second. That's... That's gonna be fun. Uh, in fact, is that even possible? We've got 12... Uh, tiles that this is attached to. So, theoretically, let's void the output. And if it was direct insertion, we absolutely can. But we're not doing direct insertion here. Okay, stone, and also stone. I think that's keeping up. What base is this? Uh, this is in editor extensions. Um, so it's basically the sandbox with cheats and stuff. I'm just updating some of our science builds so that we can use fewer machines. Um, but I still wanted to design them for as much throughput as we could support with the block. And I'll just remove some machines uh, when we get there. But yeah, I think that is working. Okay, let's remove this for now. Um, I might do like so. And stone. Hmm. Stone is here. Yeah, we can just bring that up like so. Okay, and what's our output? Oh, wait. Oh, that was direct insertion. I don't think we can do six... I'm, I'm sure we can't do 16 per second onto the belt. Uh, let's confirm. I already copied this. I mean, set this. So I guess we need more room for output. Uh, it's almost consistent. We don't actually need the 16 per second. We need 11.55 per second. How much are we getting? Whoop, it's hard to click on it. Uh, 1.5, 1.6k per minute. Let's call it 1.5. 25 per second. That doesn't seem right. Oh, oh, we're making it over here as well. Okay, could you stop, please? Okay. I'm pretty sure there's nowhere else we're making stone furnaces. Let's confirm that. Stone furnace drops to zero. Okay. And then? If we go by the minimum... It's about, let's say, 700 per minute, just to be safe. 
which is 11.67 per second. Uh, which is just a bit more than we need. I still don't feel totally okay with that, but we'll see. Dan, that little stone furnace machine can crank out the furnaces? Yeah, it can. It reminds me of, uh, uh, space manufactories when they're making little things. The stars aligned, indeed. Spadge's channel. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Alright, so... This needs steel and stone brick. How fast do they need individual? 16.5 per second? Ay ay ay. And we've got these odd number ratios as well. Um, how much steel do we need for the whole block, theoretically? 140 per second? What? Nani? Yep, there it is. We've got a big steel output here. Okay. I see how it is. I might just steal that for the moment. Uh, no pun intended. I don't know if I'll... I guess we do need a balancer. And this is as good a spot as any. How am I going to shape this? Especially to fit under one beacon. We don't need nearly as many machines, but still. We can put that pretty far up, actually. Okay, so how much do you need? Two belts of steel, two belts of red circuit, a bit more than half a belt of heat shielding, and, of course, a few steel furnaces. One, two, three, four, five, and I guess six? That's a lot. I guess we could do... What's the individual rate? 8.25 per second. I, I'm pretty sure one stack inserter will manage that. Except we need two belts to supply it. Also, with the odd number, how much does four of these use? 33, that's less than a belt. Okay, good. So that could be red circuits. Uh, heat shielding is in these little things. If I don't merge them first, it can be a bit weird. But we don't have a whole lot of room. How much do we need? 3.3 .3 per second. 
I think the long arm can manage that. Uh oh. And then this one's really awkward. Uh, let me just confirm if those inserters are going to be fast enough. Wait, what? Okay, so we need... Steel furnace and steel plate. don't seem to be struggling at all, actually. Although, with the balanced unload, but with two separate belts, I think, yeah, we've got some problems there. But we have some room, we can probably give those a little, a little merge. How much heat shielding do we need? Less than one belt, okay. Uh, that makes it really easy, actually. Although, they're probably going to want to take more from one side than the other. Better use a splitter, just in case. As long as there isn't a gap in the belt when these things refresh, it should be fine. This machine would appear to be the one that's most likely to occasionally run out, but I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, it got down to zero. I saw red. It's, it's very minimal, but... Uh, what if we do this? Might need an actual lane balancer, though I doubt it. looking for the moment where the inserters that are all synchronized Remind send something in again. Is a slow and insidious killer. It's looking pretty good, actually. Lolilo? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Don't you need, like, a second red inserter? No, it was only, uh... It was only failing to keep up when... Half of the belt was empty. Uh, it was actually... The difference between it having to reach the front or the back 
was the difference in whether the red inserter could keep up. Like, is it both sides or only one? A blue belt moves items at 45 per second. Does that mean a whole belt is full or only half a belt? Yeah, if you only have half a belt, it's 22.5 items per second. Makes sense, indeed. So the reason that this works, even though it's just a belt balancer as opposed to a lane balancer, um, is the way... I need to sync for green circuits here. Oh, here we go. Uh, if you look at the way these green circuits unloaders are working, I've got them to all swing at the same time and then wait until they're all empty, and then they swing again. Uh, so items on one side of the belt end up lagging behind a bit at the end, especially if we're if we're only consuming from one side. That can be an issue. Normally you would need a lane balancer to fix this, uh, as opposed to a belt balancer. The difference being this thing will saturate both sides of the belt, but if we're only taking from one side of the belt here, uh, only one side of the belt up here can put stuff into it effectively. Um, but because it's slow enough, we're only doing slightly more than half a belt of consumption here. It's able to catch up uh, so that this part is always saturated. I suppose I should do a better illustration. So if we have something producing... Let's put a machine here. Actually, maybe not. Uh, if we have a consumer that only wants to take from one side of the belt, let's do a yellow inserter here. And we're just going to just delete everything. Uh, if we have a consumer that's only taking from one side of the belt and we're making... Let's say batteries. I guess I could have picked something easier. Uh, void pipe. Inserter. Shift click doesn't work on this. Sulfuric acid. Okay. If we have both of these producing batteries, the inserter down here is going to have a preference. Let's do stack size one. The inserter down here is going to prefer to just take from the near side of the belt. And what's going to happen quite soon is that this machine up here is going to stop producing. Uh, and even though we are producing more batteries than we need with just this, that can be a problem. Oh, it's actually this side that's going to stop producing. So once we get a few batteries here, our battery production is going to slow down quite a lot. Um, a naive way to try to fix it, which did work in this case because our consumption speed isn't that high, uh, is to just do this. However, that doesn't quite necessarily get the job done. Um, if we consume from that side much quicker. Why don't I remove these? And we'll put in some... some spawners. 
Okay. So you can see here only this side is producing. And that's true even if we pick stuff up pretty quickly, but not that quickly. Um, how about stack size 1? You can see we're producing a little bit on the right side, as opposed to the left. But if we do a proper lane balancer, instead of just splitting and then merging again like this, uh, what we need to do is split it and then merge it again. One belt goes straight through, and then the other is given the opportunity to swap sides. Uh, a lot of people do this with underground belts, so that it's like always blocking uh, one side or the other, but that's not actually necessary, because this only becomes relevant when the belt is getting backed up. So you can see now, uh, regardless of what speed we consume this from, the producers on both sides are, are producing at the same speed. Uh, but yeah, it was it it was pretty confusing and difficult to figure out. But once you grok that. Literally all it is, is half of the stuff has to go through normally, and the other half has to be given the opportunity to swap sides, and then you merge them again. Uh, you can see how going from a belt balancer, 4 to 4, to a lane balancer is actually pretty easy. All we're doing is taking 50% of what goes through here, and giving it a chance to swap sides. Now we certainly have our arms deep under the hood of Factorio. Impressive. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that is... Sooner or later, you're going to run into some problem like that that's going to cause confused new player screaming. Um... It's much easier to understand that than it is to invent your way out of it, I think. Whoop, don't do that. Okay, so we've got the first two of these inputs set up. Uh, now we just need steel and steel furnaces. We need an entire belt or two. Yeah, we need two belts of steel here. So I guess we could do the same thing. Thing on this side, where uh, steel furnaces can go on the squiggly belt here. And steel can go in this way, if we have room. Can we do better with the shape of this? Probably. One belt is almost standing still. Uh, which one? Well, I mean, we stopped consuming for a minute here. When it was running. Oh, yeah. Uh, we don't need these substations. Alright, so two belts of steel. Oh, that's actually literally perfect. No one off this time. One off, more like right on. Got him. I see why I put that rail station where I did. Oh, also, I'm surprised that's missing. Okay. Uh, and 
we need two belts of steel here, no doubt. Yeah. It's a lot. Two belts of steel, two belts of stone brick. Uh, we've got our two belts of stone brick here. I think I'll put those on one side of this as opposed to the other. Wait, where are we going to do our output? Uh, that's a problem. Well, we've got more room to do this belt. Uh, the input for the steel furnaces. I guess we could share the input and output belt. And just do a filter to block. So if we do it like... Um, we can't really do it like that. Might just have to do it a little bit differently on this side. Hmm... If I bring this up here, we can squeeze that through there, and then I don't have to much rethink. Why did this even have to be underground? I guess it didn't. So if we have our output like so, also, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, no, that's fine. That means we'll have to have steel furnaces on this side of this belt. Put that there. Uh, it's actually electric furnaces that we're filtering off here. And unfortunately there will have to be like two of them stuck here until the end of time. Unless we put... <laughs> unless we were to deliberately put like a couple of pieces of stone there instead, but that is a little too pedantic even for me. Alright, that can go there. So we have two belts steel, two belts red, half a belt of shield, and the steel furnace input is where the electric furnace output goes. That feels weird. Oh wait, I did that wrong. Uh, this is indeed steel furnace. Okay. And then finally... Uh, somewhere or other... This connects over here, and I don't think it matters which side it's on. It doesn't. Okay. Two belts of stone brick, two belts of steel. Um, can we do that on one side? Or do I need to reshape this? No, I, we definitely have to reshape it a bit, right? We've got our two belts of steel right here. How fast do these need input? Uh, we need two stack inserters per resource. 
Wait, did I make the same mistake up here? No, it's only 8.25. Alright. We already tested that anyway. And then... Same thing on the other side for stone brick, I think. And then we just wonder how we're going to get our output again. I think I, I think I have it. It won't be pretty. But it'll work. Is it going to be on the wrong side, though? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Do I care, slash, can I fix it? I could move this instead of doing this weird thing this actually goes here that's as far as that reaches we can move these ones in a bit get rid of all that long arms go here Oh. Hold on. This goes here, actually. really weird now. Wait, we need the... We need the stone furnace input as well. So we actually will need the long arms on both sides. What a build. Oh, and that happens to line up perfectly. Yep, you called it. Uh, so then we've got steel... Uh, these two line up just fine. This one needs to go over here instead. One off. That's a little off. I guess this can be an underground. I think we might just about be there. Steel. And we've done all of the other resource inputs. Uh, stone brick, I haven't connected it yet, but we just need two belts over here. that's it. But will it saturate? Let's speed things up a bit and find out quickly. I'm not seeing this one at the end getting any steel furnaces. Oh, I see.
because the filter takes it away immediately. Um, that's going to make getting the steel here just that little bit more awkward. But I guess... Just happens to line up. I kind of like this more. Be like this. Sometimes you just have to go spaghetti to fit everything. Yeah. A little bit. Especially when the throughput for individual machines with modules and beacons is so insanely high. Uh, we're making more steel furnaces than we're consuming, which is to be expected. So I guess seeing this machine stuck at least some of the time is to be expected. That's fine. As long, the important thing here is that the steel furnaces are going full throttle. Also that the stone furnaces are backed up that the steel furnaces are backed up, and so on. Purple science appears to be... Uh, it's going to take a minute to saturate our steel furnaces, I think. Let's see, what's our rate for steel furnaces? Positive 0.1214 per second. So yeah, it is going to take some time to fully saturate. Seems to be running quite well. Yep. Why is this one stuck? Oh. Editor. Uh, because there's some stuff on the wrong side of the belt here from earlier. And I do mean it will really take a while to fully saturate. With such a small positive ratio. Seems to be getting there, question mark? But it's there, I think so. I mean, we saw full throughput from the steel furnaces. I mean, electric furnaces. Yeah, that is a really steady line. It's actually just slightly dipped. That's weird. Is it? It's not saturated, surely. Hmm. I'm thinking in future, unless... Unless there's no belt to fill, like if things are right next to each other, like with uh, uh, military science with the bullets, it's fine to do a zero, zero ratio or very slightly positive. But I'm thinking with something like this, uh, maybe, maybe in future I should avoid... Uh, such a small net positive rate for this ingredient. It only takes so long because the machines take more than they need as well. Um, I've seen a speedrunner use a circuit that... Uh, it's just a couple of things. It's a memory cell and something to reset the memory cell. I think this was to make uh, tier 1 speed modules in vanilla, 
I'm pretty sure this recipe is... Wait. No, it's the thing that uses one speed module and one blue circuit. Do we even have that in space exploration? I don't know if we do. Uh, but yeah, the machine needs exactly one of some precious resource. Uh, so you go memory cell, which is to say this thing is, has its own uh, its own output linked to its own input. And the reset condition was something like... I think he had two long-arm inserters. Oh, I have this on the Discord somewhere. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Has speed runner. Here we go. Uh, blueprint. Wait, import strain. There it is. Oh, and it's rocket control unit. Except the recipe is very different with space exploration. Uh, but yeah, we read from the output inserter, read hand contents pulse. Uh, as long as rocket control unit equals zero, this memory cell will be working. And then we read uh, speed module. Enabled condition for the thing that picks up speed modules is speed modules equals zero. Read hand contents pulse going into a memory cell means as soon as it picks one up, um, you can actually see this on the blue circuit one because it still uses blue circuits. Uh, so the recipe is one speed module, one blue circuit. But because the machines put extra stuff in, um, basically it slows things down. Especially as far as a speedrunner is concerned. So what we have here is a memory cell. Uh, this is the smallest circle that you can get, basically. If you imagine all of these in uh, combinators are just going to pass everything through. Let's say if anything is greater than zero, output everything input count. So that's unconditional. And we're going to give them some kind of signal. If I can find a constant combinator. Uh, so we give it some signal and stop, and you can see, oh, wow, that was really good timing. I guess it was about a 1 in 4 chance that this would happen. Um, but yeah, on each of these, where every tick we're receiving D31 as an input, and we're spitting out D31 as an output the next tick. Uh, this is actually just the smallest little circle that you can get. So circuit wire transmits stuff instantaneously, but it takes one tick for a combinator to receive an input and then do something, uh, spit out an output. So that's how a memory cell works. And our condition for this to be a memory cell is rocket control unit equals zero. So every time this thing picks up a rocket control unit, um, it gets a signal of rocket control unit and it loses its memory, basically. For one tick, it won't keep doing that loop. And then these two are both set to read hand contents pulse, which means just for one tick. Uh, and whatever resource they're picking up has to equal zero on the memory cell. So that way you don't get these extra items stuck in the input of the machine, which means it takes uh, basically no time for this to saturate. Like, if we had that circuit on each of these machines, it would take like 
about as much time as it takes for items to get down here. For all of these machines to be going full speed. RCUS and ANTI uses circuits to control it, indeed. My problem is that I've played like 600 hours, but I never really put time into learning wiring and trains. Yeah, it's a process. Uh, you're on the positive side and not on the negative, and you're not over using items? Yeah. This will eventually go perfectly full speed, but my goodness, it's taking a while. Happy time zone, RF Holloway. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, but with that, I think we're done redesigning our uh, Nalvis, our, our grounded uh, science blocks. And I'll just update this. Oh yeah, we already did yellow because that was like a copy-paste job. Uh, update this blueprint here. Select new contents. Remove the cheaty stuff. And I think we're good. Send a lot of furnaces on the line in the start. Yeah, definitely. Geki, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think priming it would be better. Yeah, well, if I just block the output for like a minute, uh, we should see... Why don't we speed this up? So once the whole thing is saturated... And once these ones stop moving... Almost there. Okay. So, if we're correct... Once I flip this around, we should see these machines working consistently. From now on. Uh, 53 per second, so we're not going to bottleneck on the belt. Yeah, we already did that math. 342 rail per second is um, significantly less than the eight belts we've got coming in. Oh. Wait, no, it's it's working. Although it is taking longer, because I didn't, like, merge this properly, because three quarters of this is still less than half a belt, um, one, two, and three. Yeah, all of these go to one half of the belt, and these go to the other half of the belt. So I didn't bother balancing that, because we don't really need to. But it's going to make this one take slightly longer to get started. Did I just see that machine was stopped? Hello, hello. SE actually has a good curve to help learn nuclear and circuits by forcing some of them into the main science requirements. I suppose so. Um, it's actually, in a weird way, harder for me to comment on that because... Going into SE, I was also already experienced enough with circuits uh, that I don't really think about them as that much of a challenge. Um, I would have to sort of look at it all over again, bearing in mind what it might be like uh, for someone who isn't good at circuits yet. Damn, son, that's a lot of blueprints. Yeah... It's a collection. I think we're done here, though. 
Is there anything else we want to do in the sandbox before we go back? Not really, I don't think. Nothing immediately springs to mind, in any case. I don't think I'll even save it, because we can just leave all of these out of it. I've got the blueprints. Actually, no, in case something went horribly wrong with the blueprints, let's do a save. And at this point, I think I'll take a break. Uh, first of all, I'm going to fire up some words on the stream. And... We'll start that in 30 seconds. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Hey, Veldak, good timing doing our first break. Yes. Alright, words on stream in 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes or so.
Okay. How do you guys do? Oh, it's still sinking. Skip another two levels. Nice. Let's pause this. And... Back to Factorio. And time to reorient and figure out what we're doing. Uh, I didn't think I would spend that much time just redesigning the old sciences, but on the other hand, we did just speedrun designing almost all of the vanilla sciences, or vanilla-ish sciences. Hello, Jay? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's still on the screen. Thank you. Good call. Alright, where are our... Well, they used to be the scaffolding spiders, but I repurposed them for now uh, to help clean up the old base. So that we can reclaim a few of our UPFs. Uh, speaking of which, that is why we are redesigning science. Uh, did we get this water pump? Yeah, we did. I made another modern oil block. Possibly because we need the throughput, but more likely just so that we can delete the old ones. As much as it's not that clean to look at, I'm fairly happy with this one. Uh, everything is crammed under just two beacons. And we've got plastic, sulfur, explosives, uh, six kinds of fluid, uh, solid rocket fuel. Not a whole lot of petroleum coming out of here right now, but that's to be expected. It can't do everything at once at full speed, but it's not supposed to. Janitor spiders, indeed. Speaking of janitors, maybe I should hit up some more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go get some more free tier 9 modules. And we should be refueled here, absolutely. Got tons of uranium fuel cells. Lots of spare walls on the very off chance that this thing rarely breaks itself. I was more than a little disappointed to see that the deep space miners that we've made uh, very rarely manage to break themselves. But they've got a little bit of extra wall, so we can actually fix those remotely. Where did that miner go? Uh, is it on Nalvis? No? Uh, did I name it yet? We've got an AWOL ship. And it's a deep space miner ship with antimatter engines. Griffin. That's probably it. Uh-oh. I think it auto-launched with no... without enough temperature to power itself. Um, it's going to Nalvis, so... Luckily, for some reason, spaceships have a minimum speed of 0.37. So it will eventually get home. SOS, indeed. ETA is actually only 57 seconds now. Uh, but yeah, I think I should definitely not have that Combinator active when I place these things. Or maybe I activated it prematurely. I don't think so, though. I think I remember seeing it as just a ghost. So I probably had this active, actually.
That's interesting. Um, I remember with our earlier ship designs, we actually had to give it a signal to say if a distance signal is negative 2, which means it's actually at its destination, please don't try to take off. But I haven't had any trouble. Oh, right, this is just... No. Yeah, no, this is... Yeah, I'm really surprised the Deep Space Miner ships haven't been taking off for no reason from Nalvis, just to go back to Nalvis. It's alright premature launches happen to people as they get older. Oh no. Like, I might still have some of this circuitry lying around. Here it is. If distance signal less than zero... Output negative a million spaceship launch so that it doesn't launch to the console. Because it would take off, it would be on Nalvis and its destination was Nalvis. And it would take off regardless. And it would just like immediately come back and waste a whole lot of fuel. And yet, I didn't bother or remember to do that with our deep space miner ships and they do have that circuitry on the ship sending a signal to launch if there's no nacrotite oh no wait it's if nacrotite is greater than okay that makes sense so how did it in that case how did it auto launch to nalvis Oh, I think... No, I remember. I added some stuff here to make it auto-launch. I think. No? There's nothing here. Oh, no, I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. If water is less than 5k launch and go to Nalvis. It's trying to launch right now. Luckily it has no antimatter. What? Uh well then. There's that thing I was talking about. Um Yeah, we need to turn this off. Because I think I had it... Because we weren't putting as much water in, because we the logistics to bring it up as ice is a bit more costly. I mean, it literally infinitely more costly than doing water on Nalvis. Except if we do water on Nalvis, it costs us some um, antimatter. To take off again. Um, I was putting... I think it's... Yeah, I directly connected it to this one. If water is less than 500. So we stopped when it was... Only 500. And then because there wasn't enough water... It raises the question of just how quickly it fills up with water normally. Okay, all the more reason that that constant combinator needs to be switched off um, until we're ready to launch. Gotta love automated systems, indeed. I haven't come up with without adding more combinators, a way to check if there's enough of either antimatter or ion stream. Unless I were to add a combinator to this that... Oh. That's on the green. Yeah, I could actually. If I put signals here to check for X amount of ion stream and Y amount of antimatter stream, I could just put a signal of antimatter stream here. No, that's going to set request. 
No, it's not. Even if it could, it's a fluid that wouldn't work. I would have to go and patch all of my ships. Uh, something like 16 of them. Oblong Lobolata, we've got 9. Deep Space, we've got 6. Finally set up LTN and it wasn't too bad. Nice. If you get stuck, by all means, ask away. Okay. Um, but yeah, also... Well, let's get going first, before I keep talking. I believe we still had at least one destination... at... It was either Orphorus or Stetarius. Yeah, we've been to Hore, so it wasn't the other one. We need to go to Bombato. And I think that's the only one. So we're going all the way out here just for a single uh, Tier 9 module. But also to complete our collection of... Uh, screenshots of the mysterious structures internals and see if we can see a pattern there. Uh, it was Bambato, right? B A M B A N? Nope. What was it called? Bomb. Bombato, B O M. And away we go. Accelerating rapidly. Already at a hundred. Beautiful. So it's probably going to take more than half an hour game time to get there still. It is a very long way away. Uh, maybe we could swing by these two on the way back. Anson, relatively small, kind of. And same, what, is that the exact same size? Almost. Same goes for Bellerophon. Ixian. And luckily Demos doesn't have... Uh, Demios doesn't have one because that would be a lot of fuel to take off from. Uh, the moons never have any, I'm pretty sure. And then we've got... A single big planet here. We can probably do all this in one go. And then come back to Nalvis. Cool. How much, uh... Well, I guess we haven't been playing this save that long. I was gonna say how much, um... Naquium... Have we been making? Oh, it's very... It's been very consistent for... Almost 45 minutes. Uh... For Naquitite, that is. We might be getting close to the saturation point. Yeah. Well, this is one of the old ships, so it's really slow. But yeah, we might be getting close to the point where our ships can keep up with this outpost. Nice. So that gives us... 11.98 Naquitite per second, plus whatever we're getting from Black Mirror, which is a lot harder to calculate because we definitely don't have the ships to keep up with that yet. Uh, but if we did, it would be 5.7. Uh, how much... we don't have any Naquitite in space yet, like not another delivery, surely? 
doesn't look like it. I'm sure it would have been gobbled up 10 seconds after it got there anyway. Oh, that's a, that's a lot of plate. And actually there was a delivery relatively recently, otherwise this wouldn't be empty. How many antimatter engines... Antimatter things have we been making? Wow. Uh, we made 34 in the last hour, but it was all in like 5 minutes. And we've got 22 booster tanks. We probably should be making more booster tanks than engines. Uh, but yeah, I'll definitely be spamming those until our Naquitite throughput is a bit more respectable. Unfortunately... Oh, wait. Wasn't I still scanning Stardust? Oh, that's a lot of scanning. Oh, no. I think we can stop now. Stop all scans. That might be why the save time has been getting a little bit longer lately. Can we see Naquitite? Just barely. That's iron. Oh, no, that was mostly Naquitite. Sneaky. Alright, can we get any huge pat? That is... That is a chunker right there. I think we can only fit about the same number of... Oh, I need to mark this. This is not that easy to find. Naquitite... Not recipe... Delivery can encapsule Naquitite. No, thank you. When would we ever use that? Actually, now that I think about it. There's a, there's a delivery cannon... There's a delivery cannon capsule recipe for Naquitite. But delivery cannons only work within the same system. Uh, so... Unless our destination for the Naquitite is in the same asteroid field, or if we bring it back to our solar system and then fire it by cannon, even though we just brought it into Stella without using a cannon. Yeah, I... I, I can't imagine actually doing that. But there it is, just in case you need it. You can send 10 whole Naquitite with a delivery cannon capsule. Probably not the most economical way to get that stuff around. So, our outpost at Oblong has 28 big mining drills, although one of them doesn't fit under the beacon, and I'm not bothering with a whole other beacon just for that. Um, let's call it 27 at 0.442 each. If we build another one here, which I'm sure we will. I mean, look at this. Is that going to have coverage? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Uh, it's going to be a little harder to pull off over here, I suspect. No, we could just have it like this. Yeah, that just barely, just barely does it. We don't really need these ones. Uh, in fact, these two are not needed. Although, I mean, I guess if the whole point is throughput... Oh, it actually shows you expected resources for a ghost. That's nice. This is only 11k, so that would need replacing quite soon. Although, actually, there's a little bit that's not covered here. Sure, why not? And then... I'm sure we're going to run into a problem here. Uh, there's one tile. 
that's not covered if we do this. But we already need a pipe to connect to these ones anyway, so why don't we bring these up. And does this actually almost cover everything? Alright, how many is this? 25, as opposed to our approximately 22. Uh, 27, rather. I could add another one here. I don't see why not. I'll put it slightly off so that we don't get the sulfuric acid. Uh, we'll make sure we have the productivity modules in there, and then I'll use picker dollies to just shove it over. Okay, so we're just about going to double our Nacrotite from this general area of space uh, if we build one here. And this time I would like to build uh, a ship with antimatter engines that isn't built to fit where the old design fits. Um, in before, there's actually an even bigger mine that I could have... I mean, probably not. This is 7.5 million. And the size of it is even bigger than our first one. This is 7.5 million, but I don't think we're fitting... Uh, I guess so. Yeah, no, this is bigger. And probably easier to... We did get full coverage of that one. Um... I would actually like to make a really big... Like, as big as we can. Why don't we unlock spaceship? We need a thousand... Oh, it's 500, though. Uh, we need 500 deep space mining packs one... Uh, pack one to unlock the next 500, but I think this one as well... We need 1500 science to get another thousand. That doubles the size of our biggest possible ship. Roughly four, four times the size of this one. And then we can get some much higher throughput of stuff that we get from far away without building a million ships and dipping into the UPS that much more. Um, let me just add this aquatite. I think I need to add a title to be able to see it relatively easily on the map. Where was that other patch then? Oh my goodness. 15 million? Okay, I'm glad we scanned this much. I take it back. Um, I guess I'll just mark how much we've got here. was that other one? It was 7.5 again. And there's a little bit more over here. We're probably not going to miss that too easily. There is so much we have to, like, literally just manually scan, though, to look for it. 11 million here, except it's kind of a small patch. This might be the last place we ever have to look for Naquitite. Twelve million here. Whoops. A 
11 mil? Okay, it's like everywhere, actually. Um, I think near the middle we're going to get nowhere near as much, though. Like this 1.1 million here. I think it somewhat works like vanilla in that respect. 9.3. That is... A Ooh! 14 million ice. It's so far away, though. But maybe... If we can find ice right next to one of these big mines... That's 200,000. It's not too bad. Uh, 1 million? Sure. 6.5 million. Yeah, I could see even just doing a string of bots. Um, to reach over here to bring us ice. So that we can have a power plant here and be like we've already got these ships bringing ice so that the uh wait what did i forget that part um did i forget the part where we need to resupply this place with ice I mean, we've got a lot of it, so, and 99% of the water that goes through this gets recycled. So it's going to take a while to run out, but I may have, in fact, set this thing up to eventually run out of power. Oh, wow. Okay, that's convenient. Um... Why don't we do that thing that I was just talking about and mine some ice over here? We will need roboports. And roboports. And a passive provider chest. That does come out as, yeah, the ice that we can use. Okay, so... We've got Robo Networks. Let's check. This ship that's about to get there has superchargers, Robo Ports, bots, uh, and of course, pylon substations. Also mines. Not any prod modules at the moment, though. But I'm not as worried about... Well, I'm not anywhere near as worried about um, the productivity bonus to get this ice. Um, it's really for the Nequitite. Well then, that is probably... That is probably way more than enough ice to run this thing until this mine is gone, I imagine. And by the time I want to set up another one, we have to move significantly far away. Okay. How much, uh, how much Nequitite have we been making apart from the stuff? Nequi, um, plate. It's been, it's been almost 20 minutes since we made plate. And ingot. Okay. We still need more ships. Speaking of which, I didn't put a name on that one. Is this it? 
Why does it... Oh, no. It auto-took off before it had enough power. Um... I could have it park at Moore's orbit. And then we can aim an energy beam at it. It's going to take... I don't think this was our ship. Because it wouldn't have got this far this quickly. What n what name are you? The Griffin. Uh, ob Oblong Tin. I saw you were headed for Oblong Lobolata. Uh, what was that other ship called? Did I update the name already? And there's our mine. Expected resources, 21k. Except, doesn't that not count productivity bonuses, by the look of it? Yeah, I don't think it counts productivity bonuses. So we're actually getting like 40k here. And that's before we put uh, prods in. Okay then. Don't need to worry about that for a while. Or probably ever. Where are we? There's us. We're almost past all these ships already. Um, Alright, let me check for ships that have... Uh, default names. There's a lot to scroll through here. Oh yeah, I added uh, Spice and Extract to our shuttles. Mangonel. Uh, that is battery, actually. Battery shuttle. So what's the current target? Just tuned in. Uh, we're basically spamming... Uh, hold on a sec. Battery shuttle one. We're basically spamming ships so that we can get Naquatite faster. Which we can only mine from deep space. Um, Alright, that is... Any other default name ships in here somewhere? Not that I can see. I think we got them all. Uh, yeah, so I think I... Pr Oh no, I didn't break it, but it's going to be really slow. Um, but I did deliberately break it now. Spice and Vitam Lunge Extract. We're not getting into orbit because we didn't have the cargo rocket sections uh, coming in. So I finally got around to a couple more of these shuttles being made so that we can phase out the uh, cargo rockets. Let's just check those are working, because I don't think I actually saw them work. Uh, where do they go? Oh, here they are. Vitamelange Spice and Vitamelange Extract. Fantastic. But I forgot to connect these wires. Uh, red wire first, and then green wire, and I should have connected the top and bottom rows first, 
We'll just wait until this uh, train has got what it came for. There should be... yeah, there's way more than enough to fill a train there. What? No. How dare you. Uh, green wire goes here, red wire goes here, and that should work next time. Oh, it was because it was divided by 48. That makes sense. Maybe I should have hurried, uh, hurriedly tried to connect the other wires in time. We also, yeah, we also need to whitelist Vitamelange here. We've got coal, rocket fuel, and two kinds of Vitamelange that are permitted in this block. And extract. Uh, we don't need the fish example. I remember just building one giant hauler, but I guess that's not possible. Uh, well, I couldn't build the one giant hauler earlier because we didn't... Like, I, c I couldn't have earlier on in the game built one giant hauler to rule them all for the entire game. Um, I would like... I don't know. Um, depending on how long it takes, I would either like to set up more Naquatite mining out here and just spam more of the same ships. Or I, I think I would prefer... I think I would prefer if we can wait till we have 2,000 max hull and build a very, very large and also very fast uh, container ship so that we don't need 600 ships to have decent throughput. Which I wouldn't care about at all if UPS was not a thing. Uh, 32 minutes till we get all the way out here again. What else have we got going on? Oh, I should reactivate research. Uh, Deep Space Science Pack 2 and Arcosphere Collection is what we wanted. I don't suppose we have the resources right now. Nope. Um, we did set this. Yeah, we did. Oh, I forgot. I actually disabled... Uh, I disabled this station, but it hasn't even mattered yet. We haven't run out of plate. We need a deep space catalog, which needs all kinds of things. But mostly Naquium structural data right now. Which is hurting for Naquium ingots. How close are we to getting Naquium ingots delivered? Uh, not even... A little bit, actually. Did I over-prioritize plate, perhaps? Yeah. I might have done that. I might have seriously over-prioritized plate. Nequim plate in the last hour... Aquim ingot in the last hour. They're about the same. But what, what about the scale? 32 per minute versus 200 per minute. Yeah. I think we'll go back to trying to keep those two even in this block. Just had an interesting idea for SE and warp points as shortcuts that work like wormholes for ships. 
with the drawback they draw a lot of energy. I think there may actually be... There might actually be some stuff really deep into the game that lets you do that sort of thing. Stabilizing point for a spatial anomaly. Arco link storage. A container linked by extra dimensional space to other containers. The links of the container depend on the surface it's first placed on. I have no idea what that means, but we need deep space science for and 5,000 of it. So don't get too excited. We basically have to have beaten the game to take advantage of that. Teleportation technology. Well, there it is. This technology does nothing on its own, but it's a gateway to other technologies. But there's only one. Is this a secret, or is it coming soon, TM? I never used one, but I assume it's a connected chest. Yeah, a connected chest would uh, would basically be game over for getting stuff from far away places. You can place two chests and link them together. My idea was rather an intermediate solution, indeed. All right, what should we be doing now, though? Are you full? Not even a little bit. How are you so not full? Oh, the bots are probably... no? Huh, that's weird. All right, keep deconstructing things then. Oh, this is a lot of stuff to deconstruct, though. Since they're so empty for now, this is probably a good time to do it. Start with the yellow science, I guess. That'd be a lot of yellow science. And I do mean a lot. I don't know if our spiders can contain it all. Why is this one not doing anything? Well, we'll give them a minute. Uh, also, let's start replacing the old science stuff with something a bit more UPS friendly. I also want to update these signals. I guess we don't need those two, actually. Doesn't take that much to pick up all this stuff, but the chests themselves are a whole other story. Uh, that's why we just spent all that time designing. Alright, red sides. Goes here. Um, and just in case, let's get rid of the old power poles. Um, I'm sure we don't need anywhere near as many as that though for the foreseeable future um i might just remove that for now wait what why doesn't that line up oh was that already there no wait what I think the ones on the right were just not finished. And two of them are off by one. Um, yeah, one to the right. Which makes that look a little bit awkward, actually.
What's the shooty sound that plays sometimes? That is spaceships taking off or landing. Uh, when they when they appear on this surface that we're looking at, it makes that sound. And when spaceships take off or land in this game, they literally just sort of blink in or out of existence on that surface. Sonic boom when the spaceship leaves atmosphere. Yeah, but it happens in space as well. Spacey boom. Products finished. Oh, it doesn't tell us with mines, does it? Well, I'm sure... Yeah, it's like a thousand. We definitely don't have to worry about running out of ice here. But even so, I should have... I should have ice as something that's required. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. This is why I should use set requests. Because... Because with this thing at... The, the trouble is we can't set requests and read content. I do it with some other ships in a roundabout way by subtracting what's in the, uh, the main robot network uh, from what's in the whole robot network by using circuit wire to read the storage chests. If I had this set to set requests as opposed to read contents, this was easy to, to make in the first place, but now if I want to patch it so that these things bring ice out, I have to go through 16 different ships. And it could be worse. Um, I think I'll drop the amount of ammo that we're asking for. And ice will be one stack. We set it three below that because sometimes the bots oversupply it. Copy paste that. Oblong one is here. Oblong two. If I copy paste oblong, I don't lose the copy paste paste of the chest, right? Cool. Oblong three. Oblong 4. Oh, and it is sorted by name now. Oblong 5. Oblong 6. Oblong 7. Oblong 8. 9. And 10. And then we need to do the deep space miners as well. This is the one that's heading for Moore's orbit, I think. 30 minutes still. Just to go this far. Rip. Deep space miner. Number one. Uh, it's too full, though. Alright, I know how to sort that out. Deep Space Miner 2, Deep Space Miner 3, Deep Space Miner 4, Number 5, and Number 6. And then over at our block here, we need to say... We're only looking for 997 media point defense ammo, but we're also looking for 197 ice. Okay, 
So if any of those ships don't have room for ice when they come back here, they'll get stuck. Um, and we'll just keep an eye on that. Ruining immersion? <laughs> okay. Um, where are we? 28 minutes still. It's a, it's a long way st to Statarius. Okay, um, those two ships are rather close together. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's because the mine actually works while the ships aren't there. That's sort of a, kind of a silver lining of this worse way that we did the first one. Because the mines don't work while the ship isn't here. Um, we're immediately going to get the ships the same distance apart as the mine can support. And so we can estimate how many of these ships that we need for this throughput much more easily. But as much as it's a nuisance to bring out some ice, um... I think I do prefer... I think I do prefer being able to defend against meteors all the time. I was going to say maybe we could just put accumulators here, but I'm sure that would run out in record time. Like, even if we stopped the miners from doing their thing. I don't think you can circuit control miners, can you? Oh, you can. I'm pretty sure it used to just be read resources. Huh. So now you can enable or disable mining drills. Is that true of vanilla miners? Well, yeah, we could make it so when the ship leaves, the miners switch off. Uh, but then we've still got the beacon using up 10 megawatts. Not to mention... Half a megawatt for each media point defense. So that's actually 11 megawatts uh, sitting idle here. Not counting the RoboPod either. So I don't think it would take that long to drain the batteries. Which means we pretty much have to have a power plant. Uh, which means high temp turbine generators, if not condenser turbines by themselves, which means consuming water, albeit slowly. Unfortunately, we can't use RTGs to power buildings. And also, unfortunately, we can't turn beacons off when they're not really being used. Lol. Oh! Oh! Nasty! We did get a rare um, wall being destroyed. And this was in normal density, I think? Where are we? Yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm pretty sure there's no triple density over here. Just an asteroid coming in from the side at the perfect angle. Brutal. Could we maybe move this laser back a bit? That might be a good idea. I don't know how much difference that necessarily would have made. It's, uh, it's a little bit shocking how... How thoroughly you can test one of these things. And then it still eventually, very rarely, uh, gets broken. I guess there's no kill like overkill. 
Or to put it another way, there is no overkill, there is only open fire and I need to reload. What if I had a shield here? We definitely can't fit that on this design. It would be nice though. Something I might do on a future build. Something like this. Okay. What else have we got going on? I want those Naquium ingots. Deep Space Miner 6 is coming back. It's one of the slow ones, though. I really, really want Science Pack 2 so that we can... Um, unlock Deep Space Catalog 3 and start designing this stuff. And, and Arcospheres, I want to start collecting those. More faster, indeed. I don't know what top speed limit is, but I got a bit over six, uh, 363. Then my defenses failed. Rip. Okay. Um, should we keep churning out deep space miners? But yeah, we need to send more to get the most out of Black Mirror anyway. And quite possibly still to get the most out of uh, Oblung... Oblung... Oblung Lobulata. I got there eventually. Um... Let's go with this one. And I did calculate how much water it takes to get there and back, but I don't remember. I think I'd rather just send it to Nalvis first. It's simpler. Alright. Deep Space Miner, Empty Matter. I guess I could start designing the next... We're gonna need more space than this. I guess there's nothing stopping me from designing a ship that has hull integrity greater than a thousand. Probably. Let's see. Let's start with some spaceship floor. And all I'm going to do is fill this with chests. And see what it says. Beautiful. Might need to add some other things, but we'll see. Checking console. There we go. Unstable. Some sections will disconnect. That's this stuff. Why is that... Passive provider chest. Also, I don't love the bots coming in from the other block. Uh, but yeah, I think we can probably... It says valid unstable. Okay, cool. Um, if we add chests until it goes over a thousand... It's not going to explode or something, we can just... We can design the ship that we want to make before we have the technology for the hull stress. I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, there we go. 1920 out of a thousand. Shouldn't be an issue. I'm pretty sure the antimatter engine is going to get kidnapped by this robo network down here. But it'll eventually get back to where it belongs. Uh, but yeah, if we're going to do a 2,000 ship... I might design it here, actually. We'll see. What do we got? Antimatter stream. Uh, we've already got our water. At least in so far as enough to go to Nalvis. We need to wait for heat before we launch this thing. That's the trouble with it. Um, the biggest nuisance for building new ships, making a new block to build new ships, is pumping the fluid over. Especially since we need antimatter for the new stuff. We've got it here, though. Why don't we just extend this robo network up? Hmm. I actually need it to be not this robot network. Let's just be lazy and extend this one up. could send my construction spiders over, that might help. Oh yeah, what were they doing here? This thing is busted. What happened? Oh, I see the problem. We forgot to subtract what's already in the train. Uh, you may go. And then, easiest way to fix this is have the construction spiders deconstruct the inserters and then put them back. Uh, we've got... I think we've got all the wiring correct now. Oh, we're about to find out. We can see the S stack size is decreasing, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine. And there it goes. Fantastic. All right, back through the ball and over this way in case we still need you. And I need to keep these two robot networks separate. Maybe I should just set it up so that this is all one robot network. Um, and I would need to remove one of the trash trains. That would probably make a lot of sense. I need to... This is reading from robot network, right? To bring stuff over here. Don't we have... Okay, we're using the requests over here times three. If we have more than three times anything that we ask for, it gets taken out. What is this thing? Oh, I see. Uh, and then we probably have something similar over here. So... I should probably just add these requests to this lot and get rid of these two stations. Except this one's requesting... Ma well, no, that'll be fine once we unify them. That would probably save a few headaches. Should be 
pretty straightforward. I don't even use this old shuttle anymore. Do I really need to have ammo and stuff delivered here? Well, I'd like to review what's on these combinators to make sure I'm not leaving anything out. And I'll add some more storage here just in case. Uh, I guess we would have to get rid of all of this storage since it's not circuit wired. Um, they're nowhere near full, most of them, but this is 70 chests. We may as well just make sure this is overkill. Oh, that's super overkill. This game is not over until you can fly faster than me, and reliably. What kind of double standard is that? I might just leave these here, and I'll leave them disconnected. And then if I find certain items are missing, I'll add them back. Oh my... no. Stop. It's so weird the way that lines up. I don't need this one. This is already here. Definitely get rid of that. We've got this thing. Uh, we've probably... not, actually. Got that here. Biochemical facility. We've definitely got bots. I don't think we have modules. Uh, we've definitely got this stuff. Uranium fuel cells. Don't need artillery. Don't need rockets. Uh, probably don't need any of that. And we've got these things already. We've also got... Pretty sure we've got all of this. And we've got that. Okay, so... Roboport... Connection? Let's make sure it's always active. And then we can switch off this station, get rid of this trash station. Don't think we need that, or that, or that. Oh, and all of these storage chests need to be moved. Okay, that will make significantly less of a headache. We can just treat this all as one big shipyard area. And why don't we extend this out up here? We can add roboports up here. And this should be plenty of room. Unless I want to make the ship really wide, which I think probably not. Uh, I'm pretty sure the container stress is going to be the vast majority. Like, the size of the ship, we might not go that far. 
come to think of it, I should probably be using the editor to design this so that we can actually test it. But we can at least build uh, an area for making new ships. Twenty-one minutes still. This is a long way out. I can't remember the last time... Well, no, this is literally the first time taking this ship anywhere that it felt like a journey. Uh, let's grab our scaffolding spiders. Are they full? Oh, wow. They actually... They actually got all the yellow signs. Or at least they did with some help. Let's send them back to the mall. There's only like seven of them, I think. Uh, maybe eight or nine. Or I could... Uh, this thing is already... 882 container stress, two antimatter engines. Like, as much as I was sticking to the constraints of building this within the shape that we'd already used before, um, I don't think we can improve this very much without going for more hull stress, uh, more container stress rather. Well, then again, we've got a whole bunch of free hull stress here. We could add energy shields. Oh, we could definitely do... We could definitely do something more like this. But then we're not constrained by using the same shape as this one. I'll, I'll keep this thing until the end of time. That's fine. Also, we need a beam pointed at that. Do we have a spare? I don't think so. Uh, we sort of do. This is for new ships. Um, over here, please. Fantastic. But yeah, I should probably add more... That's actually quite a lot of solar power. Um, but I could add more so that we can have more energy beam emitters here. And I could also, I could also increase the amount of power that we're putting into them. Well, this one's also sort of spare, kind of. The ones that are aimed at Narvis I do not want to be messing with. Why do we have a beam receiver here? Oh, because I was doing an experiment. Yeah, uh, this is 3119 Celsius. And as you can see, it hasn't changed at all. We put this here about a million hours ago. And that's true of any kind of heat pipe. Uh, it doesn't... In Factorio, it doesn't actually radiate heat at all. It's just a resource. Okay. So, I think we will go for... If we go for the high temp uh, heat exchanger, we have to go with an energy beam receiver for now. The antimatter reactor is a lot of naquium away. And we're bottlenecked on naquium for pretty much everything we want to do right now. Did we get any more on, on Nalvis yet? Yes, yes we did. I don't suppose we've had enough to go over here right now. 
Not even close. Okay. Uh, why is so much happening with the spy? To, maybe I should send them back to the mall. Oh, they're trying to pick up all of this? That's why. I think we just created a lot more logistic work. And the bots still haven't built this robo-port. Uh, that's unfortunate. Let's get some... Pylon substations up here. Yeah, we kind of created a million bot jobs all at once. But it's getting close to done. How hot is this thing? 551 degrees. We can technically send it on its way, but I'm going to wait for another couple of hundred. Okay. So we need quite a bit of spaceship core tile. It's easiest if we just start with way too much of it and then trim it afterwards. And we never got rid of that, either. It's happening. There weren't that many high-volume chests here, anyway. Where are our... Old scaffolding spiders. Here they are. Craftily hidden. Let's get them to pick this up. Actually, that's in the robot network already. all sorts of stupid patterns so that the bots can catch up to them. And I can't believe we've got this many ships for Naquatite, but well, we are processing it right now, at least. Now why isn't this taking off? Probably because it doesn't have ice. Yep, that's the only reason. I actually forgot... Well, first of all, I need to... I need to take some of this stuff out. Do we have... I don't think we have an active provider chest here, do we? Hmm. Uh, I don't actually have a convenient way to do this. I was thinking of just turning it into an active provider chest for a second. What's our threshold? Uh, request threshold 1, okay. Before I do, let's ask for ice. And... maybe a thousand? That's only five stacks. Make it five thousand. I mean two thousand. And also... Active provider chest. So that way we can... I guess I could just mark this for deconstruction actually. Yeah, I thought of that before. 
don't know why I blanked on it. The bots only need to pick up so much, and then we can cancel that. And there should be room for the rest, for the ice now. Nope. Wait, how much do we have? Oh, we, we do have 1.1k media point defense ammo in here. But the bots picked up all this other stuff first. It seems they go from top left. We just need them. We just need them to pick up like fifty media point defense ammo. But first, they have to get through about a thousand other items. Come on. There you go. I believe the ice is on the way. Nope. It's... I don't think this is how this works, but I'm curious, actually. If I change this here... I'm pretty sure it won't change the signals for what LTN is asking for. Once it gets to the stop. Oh, I don't think we even have ice in that block, though. Most likely. Yeah, we don't. Okay. Uh, let's just send that train home for now, then. And do we have a train limit of one here? We don't. Do we have ice coming? We don't. Why do we not have ice coming? Oh, let me guess. There's no ice at the mall. I imagine. No, there's 777. I don't know that we're actually requesting it. But did we enable ice to be picked up by short trains in the first place? We did, actually. Except we're not making it that fast. I should probably just make another block to make ice, actually. We don't have a shortage of the resources that go into it, but we did uh, have some trouble keeping up with ice at some point. So we need cryonite, sulfuric acid, and water. That's pretty easy. Where are our construction spiders? Oh, that's right, they were building the new science block. Except it got a little bit messed up by... Um, stuff that I forgot to delete. Also, they're probably full of stuff that they need to drop. Uh, let's just remove this extra stuff. We've got the blueprint, after all. Oh, I accidentally removed the beacon. I'm sure this is enough for the foreseeable future, actually. Because every science that we do is bottlenecked on deep space science, and we only get 3.5 per second. That's if we had, if we were absolutely swimming in Naquatite. Uh, that's how much we would be getting. But I'll still put a beacon here at the very least. Let me just find one with the usual configuration. There it is. Wait, is that? Yeah. And 
modules. No speeds. Uh, okay, let's send you back to the mall for a second. I think I automated this little ship to come back down, but only when it has a ton of productivity modules. Uh, of which it has zero. What? Why are there no prod sixes here? We did add the request for them. What what's happened with prod sixes? There's five hundred and fifteen in the in the mall. And we are making them. So how did we end up with zero prods here? Oh, is this disconnected? No, it's one it's one robot network. Also, what is this train doing? Oh, I see. Can you just go home then? Get rid of this station. Also get rid of all of this noise. We are looking for prod modules. Productivity 6. And this normally comes from the mall. What's our train limit? 5. Hmm, maybe the trains are just a bit busy. Probably from all of that noise that I made earlier. Okay, let's start designing a ship. Why not? We can do these two in the middle, these out here, or maybe something more like what we did back here. It might work better actually. Uh, I did find a way to save a little bit of space back here. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it didn't leave room for the flat solar panel. And it only gained like one tile, maybe vertically. Yeah, I think... No, I think it was this water came down like so... Uh... I th yeah, 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 I think if we move the entire ship because of the snap to grid with the spaceship clamps. If we move the uh, the clamp down, like one tile, or maybe even two, then we don't need this row to get the water out, because we can just do that up here. Uh, but then of course we don't have room for the solar panel. But this new ship isn't going to be that shape anyway, because I think I would like... No, I'm sure I would like this to be a beam receiver ship. I, I do like that our workhorse spaceships uh, don't require nuclear fuel or something like that. And the same can apply to antimatter fuel. I might use this design. What the? Oh no. Uh. That's a problem. Oh, yeah. That, that's an R, indeed. What would be the best way around this? I guess, uh... Hmm. 
Let's pump this antimatter back this way so we have... We, we can remove these pipes without destroying the antimatter. If there's room in the nearest container. One job, indeed. If we do... Could this pump a little faster? Oh, I see. Wait, no I don't. Oh, we've got tons of room for it here, it's just bottlenecking. This is going at a thousand, actually. On this side. But this is where we need to empty it. Alright, I'm gonna come back to that. Um, I will, however, copy this part. I don't love that with the engines and with the spaceship console, they're an even number of tiles wide, and this thing is an odd number of tiles wide. So we end up with a ship that is asymmetrical one way or the other. Was this like this, really? That looks kind of weird. Yeah, I guess... So. Oh yeah, because it was avoiding connecting with this or that tank. It's very tall if we use this layout. And there's really nothing for it unless we have the steam snake around in a weird shape. And then we have the issues with fitting the condenser turbines somewhere anyway. That was four ships taking off and landing. I hope that wasn't some automation glitch. Probably not. Alright, this one has its temperature now. Let's get it to go to Nalvis. And it'll get ice, sulfuric acid, and so on. And we should probably start building another one immediately. Could we maybe, just for the sake of symmetry, do something like this? That means we're, we've got this whole tile that we're not using. Uh, we're not going to use Naquitite solar panels because... I don't want to spend much more Naquitite on our most common ship, at least not yet. It is only one Naquim cube. Hmm... That's like 8... no, it's 16 plate, though. Uh, that do be kind of expensive, actually. Also, we're missing this part. I think this is way more than enough water storage because with the antimatter engines, wherever we're going, we're getting there pretty fast. We can put down some... Oh yeah, this is one of the troubles with the shield... Uh, not shield projector, energy beam receiver ships. If we want to do shield projectors, the beam receiver is kind of in the way. Dude, coma approaching. Enjoy it, I suppose. If we put this here... And then... This goes somewhere like here, perhaps? 
Why is Veldak talking about me? <laughs> Burgers and fries. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, do we not have... I'm sure we have shield projectors here. No, I think I hadn't... I hadn't requested those here. They they weren't a staple yet. But I'm pretty sure we've got, like, several. At least. No? Have I not automated them? Did I handcraft them? That seems unlikely. Uh, spaceship things. Yeah, maybe I just temporarily put in an automation signal to make a few shield projectors just to play with them. But I'm pretty sure this is the only ship we've actually used them on so far in this game. Alright, so let's automate some... No, here they are, 50 shield projectors. So why don't... Why aren't we making them? We're trying to make some other stuff. Okay. Um, can we maybe prioritize spaceship stuff for now? Let's skip the timer. Why is it not trying to make anything? Shield projector. No, we do have them. Did I typo it? Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, did I request those here yet? I did not. Spaceship things. Spaceship things. Here they are, but there's no room. I might just move some of that onto this combinator right here, so that we can uh, separate those and have some room for other stuff. Alright, so we're removing all of this. That works. Projector. What's the stack size? 50. What's our request threshold? 1. Okay, cool. We probably don't need more than 10 projectors here at a time. Make it 20. I'm good, Hacks. Just frustrated because there were mechanic I was unaware of in my nuclear design and now I have to redesign my 3 gigawatt power. That happened to me. In fact, uh, I actually tested the hell out of this one. Where is it? On oh, Nalvis. Oh, this isn't nuclear, but it's like the same technology except for the source of heat. Um, I actually tested this pretty thoroughly in editor extensions, or so I thought. But as it turns out, the heat at the end of these heat pipes uh, slowly runs out during the night. But we do have enough solar on Nalvis, just direct solar power, um, that this thing basically switches off during the day. So this is our... This is effectively our nighttime backup. Uh, but yeah, um, there is limited throughput for heat in heat pipes is probably the number one annoying hidden mechanic that you find out the hard way when it comes to designing nuclear plants. There's also fluid throughput to worry about, but with enough pump spam uh, almost anything is possible. If you have uh, very few pipe segments between pumps, then the throughput is very, very high. But yeah. It's surprisingly 
involved. Uh, like, building functional nuclear power is not really difficult, but tweaking it and optimizing it is, is, uh, is a journey. Not to mention um, just designing a layout that you're happy with. These are, what are they, 3x5? Yeah, 3x5 tile steam turbines. Uh, they're a bit of a hassle to make something aesthetically pleasing. Pretty happy with this though. Looks very clean, thank you. Oknods, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, um, so I guess we're waiting for a few minutes before we get our shield projectors up here. But that should give us pretty I could move these forward a bit. Should give us pretty decent coverage. Uh, if this is where we're putting our engines... Oh, that's perfect, actually. Uh, let's not delete laws just yet. I'm doing my first mega base right now, mostly vanilla, and I'm doing fixed size rail tiles, so relatively optimal use of real estate is important. Yeah. I love me some rail box as well. I have a door here. Oh, I didn't finish building this because I had to wait for the floors. Let's put that there. And then... I think this is going to kill way more asteroids than it needs to. Uh, and then we're going to be paying more for power than we need to. So maybe... Then again, if I do that, I could see something hitting the side. If we've got a high temp turbine generator, this shouldn't be a problem, I think. I prefer an organic designed rail system rather than that rather branches like a tree. I suppose. Although it would be rather tangled if it was this big. A few weeks ago, I spent a weekend fitting a 2.4 megawatt nuclear plant in my rail blocks. I went through like five designs. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, how would I fit? I've actually got some spare blocks here. 2.4 megawatts, that is... Uh, 240 heat exchanges, am I wrong? I think this is 2.4 megawatts. Yeah, 240 heat exchangers. Wait, how big are your rail blocks? If it's nuclear, we also need room for how many reactors, actually? I think it's eight because of the neighbor bonuses. Most of them get 300% neighbor bonus, and the ones on the end get two. Uh, 40 times 4 times 6 is 960, and then 128 by 128, I think. Okay. How far is this? This is 31, 30, 60, 90, 120. All right, so about as maybe a bit taller than the screen, if you zoomed out. Is the size of your rail block, is that right? Ooh, kind of like the look of that. Oh, it doesn't move around properly if I 
Should I move this up a tile? Better to have... Uh, better to not have a gap in the coverage, I think. We're definitely going to need more... Um, okay, not that far. Definitely going to need more spaceship floor up the front. We're probably still going to be within a thousand for um, hull integrity, just for the size of the ship. It's way, way, way easier to go overboard with integrity, with hull stress, uh, with containers, as opposed to the size of the ship. This one, for example, is 960, I think. Uh, 882. I don't know why I thought it was 960. But it's only 632 hull stress. So we actually have to build pretty big to get to 2,000. I think I'll just build... Um, this thing doesn't let me build... Wait, it does. Wait, what? I think, I think when I'm there in person, if I try to place, um, it, it, it's saying it's empty space, but if there was floor here, I can't place this where the spaceship wall is, and that is probably a very good indicator, if not perfect, of whether or not the, uh, the energy shield wall is going to prevent that wall from taking damage. But it seems like with uh, placing ghosts, it'll just let us put walls straight through here. Yeah, I lied. It's 196 by 196 with 128 by 128 buildable space. Okay, well, that's fair. That's more what I was thinking about anyway. That is rather large, though. I guess you don't do, like, single recipes, for example. For most things in a block that large. Um, okay. Do we want to go even more antimatter engines? Would that be. Why not? Whoops. Yeah. Why don't we? We've got this shield sticking out pretty far. I think the odds of... Especially if we're going really fast, the odds of... Something coming in from the sides seem pretty low. I would hope. So this is a new... I guess I could put the engines up here more, as well. Hmm. What about... I can't quite squeeze it in here. Would I even want to? What the... Okay. How dare you. Uh, this can go here... This has to go here. If we put this here and connect like so, we can maybe have... Is this going to count as like blocking this one or no? I like the look of that. I hope this works. I really hope this works. At full speed. At, like, a, without penalty. Chunk of a ship? Yeah. I want to design 
something can't flip the engine, even though it's symmetrical. I see how it is. Hmm. Shouldn't we be able to move this up a tile? If we use undergrounds, then this won't collide because this is sticking out one. Also, I could put a solar panel here, but it's going to be off center. I don't know what I could put in here that's 5x4 that I would be happy with. A couple of accumulators, maybe. Okay. Let's pick a dollies this stuff down. Whoops. Can't pick a dollies that. I guess we'll just cut and paste all of this. Yeah, I like where this is going. We've got some room for something or other over here as well. It's a pretty good fit. Please tell me that's going to be maximum engine power. And we'll definitely have our antimatter resupply here. That's a lot of antimatter tanks as well, but I guess it's a lot of engines. It's fine. I love the aesthetic of the back of this ship, actually. Look at that. And the way the antimatter engines on the sides kind of line up with the condenser turbines. Uh, I know we don't have enough turbines to get the most out of our high temp turbine generator, but antimatter engines don't use that much power. One, two, three, four, five, six megawatts. And this can go to a gigawatt. We don't quite need three of these. Um, it's 500 degree steam is 214, 215. And this can consume 80 per second. Uh, so we need 2.69. So we get more than two thirds power out of our one gigawatt when it's blocked. That's going to be way more than enough. Just so much more than enough. Um, we could definitely put the spaceship console on either side here. Plenty of room for some solar panels or something. Oh, we need to resupply water. That isn't quite going to reach like that, and it makes me sad. Uh... Literally one tile off. I wish I was here in person so that I could see... Oh, it does kind of... Huh. If I remove the floors... 
then I can see where the walls would go. Assuming that this thing blocking the walls is telling us exactly where the hitbox is going to be in front. So I can mouse this up here and then put a floor here. And we can see how that would go. It's a bit uh, clunky, but what can you do? I guess what I'll do is trace out the floor. To give us the maximum amount of space. And then we'll make changes to that so that we have a streamline, for example. It's actually pretty easy to do. I need to remove this to make sure. That can go to there. That can go to there. Oops. This will probably be like so. And we could have a little tiny bit of wall sticking out there if we want. Alright, well, that, that's, that's that. That's our shape. Uh, I guess I will copy paste flip this. And then like so. That should be symmetrical. We don't have to use every tile up here, but I just want to know where the limits are. Also, whether it would be streamlined or not. So, just to confirm... That is, in fact, symmetrical. Cool. I hope this bit's covered by the shield. Not to mention this part. The only other way would be... No, it's too far back, or too far forward. Okay. What's our integrity at? Oh, wow. Just under a thousand. Cool. Uh, I think we'll be using this design sooner than expected. Aren't the bits in space bigger than one by one anyway? Uh, what do you mean by that? The bits in space. Also, where are we going to fit our... Well, I mean, it's going to be pretty easy to fit. There's plenty of space on this uh, ship. But I think we'll put our pylon substations here. From what you defend with the shield. Oh, no, I have seen them... Um, I think when we had this one tile in... And this one tile in. Or was it two tiles in? I think when they were both in the middle like this. And pointing diagonally to the other side. 
uh, we had asteroids manage to squeeze in through the middle. So, better to have it crisscross than leave a gap, but we don't have that many options over here. Uh, how streamlined are we? 100%. We could go with this exact shape, although I don't like these bits jutting out very much. Then again, it would give us more laser. Um, effectively. I don't think this is excessive. Like, ten lasers. Because we've got six antimatter engines. Although, on a thousand hull ship, it is... I guess we've got four on this one, but almost only half the hull. Probably going to be a pretty similar speed, actually. And this one's got one, two, three, uh, nine lasers. And it actually got hit just once. So, yeah, I don't think ten lasers is excessive there. Also, we've only got, uh, four condenser turbines. That's like 11, 22, yeah, 23 megawatts here. I don't think we're going to have any power problems with the new ship. I really kind of like the shape of it, actually, looking at it on the map. It looks a little bit like, uh, like something an artist would have designed for a game. Um, we could put solar panel here, I guess. Oh, wait. I just wish, um... I just wish we didn't need a little bit of extra pipe to resupply the water. Or if we could squeeze this through here, that'd be nice as well. Uh, we are going to want these things to carry sulfuric acid as well. I kind of want to make something that's going to be universal. Uh, we can send it to a deep space mine, and we can copy-paste it and send it to something like Keto Bar. And just have like a universal pickup station type area. Which is pretty easy when we have bots doing the pickup as well. I definitely want um, to use set requests on our chests as opposed to uh, setting these things manually and reading contents. For reasons brought up earlier in the stream where we had to patch like 16 ships. Why are these two stuck? You've got your eyes. Uh, what? Ice, negative 197. Are we reading contents here? We are reading contents here. You've got 200 ice. Recipe? Oh, recipe water ice. Crafting combinator signals strikes again. Recipe water ice. Negative 197. Water ice is what we should have done. No, that's recipe delivery ca How dare you? Ice. Uh, here we are. Water ice. 197. And if we copy that up here, our ship should probably take off unless it's missing something else. Oh? 
What are ice? Oh, it just doesn't have ice. Oh, this one didn't get... I don't suppose I can scroll back to this. No, I can find that ship that just left. Here it is. Uh, copy paste the settings on this chest. I think that chest wasn't overly full yet. Yeah, no, we're good. So once it has its ice, it should be on its way. Fantastic. That also means we got two loads of Naquatide as well. We already finished processing it though, so those ships have been there for a minute. Uh, but yeah, that's actually an excellent illustration. Um, well, no, this is this was a different problem slightly. But yeah, when I realized I wanted them to be carrying eyes, I had to go through one by one every ship of that design that we've built and add ice to the requests for them. Uh, whereas if I use set requests, all I have to change is a combinator at the, uh, in this case at the pickup station. Um, I did the thing again where I didn't check, well, I guess, oh no. Okay, the one thing I really don't like about having a middle... Okay, two things, but one of the things I really don't like about having a middle tile with these ship designs is the spaceship clamps. Uh, we can't have symmetry with these, unfortunately. So we're going to put this clamp here. And I'm pretty sure if I remove these two spaceship floor tiles... Uh, it won't pass an integrity check if I put the clamp here, but I'd like to double check or demonstrate that. Um, but I guess I can live with just one uh, spaceship clamp wire part. I mean, spaceship clamp. So this will probably not pass an integrity check. Yoshinochi, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, did we fail? Passed. That's weird. Wait, there's floor there. Oh, the bots didn't remove it yet. I think. Let's let's right, let's double check this. I want to be sure. And remove the floor. It'll let us put the clamp there, as long as the back two tiles have something. But I'm pretty sure if we have spaceship clamp just like this, with missing floor tiles here, uh, it won't recognize that as being sealed. As opposed to what we just had. Yeah, okay. Good to know. I think we might have also only had... Yeah, we did the same thing with this ship. Because the central point is one tile. Oh well, I guess we just have to live with it. And then, I think here is good for the chests, actually. We can have a lot of them. Oh, um, I keep forgetting we need, we need room for the water throughput. I guess we'll just do it like this. I mean, I could do a fiver here, but it looks like something you'd trip over. Also, we want to put the chests there. So how many chests can we put? 
in a thousand container stress. Uh, especially considering we also need fluid storage for sulfuric acid. I don't suppose I could get some symmetry with the sulfuric acid storage. Realistically, no. I don't really mind that much. We can put that here. Close to the clamp is always good for these things. Especially since we can read the fluid content easily. Um, so what's our container stress at? Six hundred and forty-two after we added twenty chests. Uh where else could I add some more? I think I'd like to put a roboport on here as well. We've got plenty of room for that. I'll put the roboport here. So it's sort of more symmetrical, sort of. And then we can use this space for solar panels. Maybe here as well, if we move that laser a bit. Hmm. I don't like having the lasers not too far up the front, though. Uh, I think here is better. And we don't need, like... We don't, we don't need more than four solar panels. This is more than enough. Pretty sure we'll be consuming zero power whenever we're parked in a solar system. Um, maybe even more lasers? And maybe not having this jut out this way? What's the goal of this ship? Uh, as much speed and item throughput as possible with our current technology, which is to say hull stress 1000. Um, and I also want it to be kind of universal that we can use this for deep space mining. We can use it, f well, we, it, it won't fit in our current, maybe a black mirror it would. I mean, we could land it at Black Mirror, but we'd have to add some pipe for the sulfuric acid. Also, I think there's a rock in the way or something. Uh, maybe Oblong Lobolata? I've actually learned to say that. Oh. Yeah, we've got a surprisingly good amount of space for that here as well. So we'd just have to add another pipe for sulfuric acid. Well, that's cool. That's what you get when you've just got empty space to play with for the parking space for the ship. I guess it it's also because we've only got the clamp on the right side. Also, we're here. How about that? It is about time to end the stream, though. Um, this is streamlined, right? It does sort of stick out a bit more than I like. We do gain some hull stress for doing that as well. Maybe if I move this back a little bit, we do this. That's a lot more likely to be protected by the shield, I think, as well. I think 
we should just put that extra laser up the front, to be honest. I'm sure that's streamlined. Yep. Yeah, I like the way the left side is coming along a bit more. We could probably... Yeah. That's fine. Alright, let's find a stream to raid, I think. Uh, who is playing Factorio? So, just two more days and we're going to be doing the variety Begathon, I mean Subathon. Looking forward to that. Tumbling Satellite is designing an all-in-one self-building mega base. Oh, that sounds interesting. I have to raid that. I haven't actually seen this mod in action before. What is it called? Uh, recursive Blueprints, I think? Great stream, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out. Yaman, welcome, welcome. Alright, let's drop in on tumbling. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions about anything, by all means. And, uh... Say hello to Mr. Satellite. Take care, guys. I haven't done the stone, stone breaks yet. Oh, what an absolute sausage. Tyrannosaurus! I'm watching you myself now because I was in there watching you. How are you doing? How did the space exploration go? Welcome in Raiders! Welcome everybody. Thank you very much for the raid. Always a pre One day I will manage to raid you. Hello, Kabach. Epic raid indeed. Magnificent, even. How's everybody? Got to have.